Good morning, everyone. Uh, is my slides are visible? It's yes, not visible. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Once again, I am Dr. Mega Barot, and uh, I am a base coordinator. And uh, today we are here for the validation of base nine, and uh, I welcome you all. Uh, very good morning, uh, Anil sir, uh, Sanjay sir, and my dear students and my colleagues from SISTI. So I'll uh, start with the, um, I'll give a brief about the Biotech Innovation Ignition School, what uh, BIS is up to and what we have done uh, during BIS 9. So, yeah. So uh, BIS is, uh, uh, also called as an appreciation grant and it's under the Sitare scheme that is students innovations uh, for translation and advancement of, of research exploration and uh, as we have already discussed that under the Sitare there are two schemes and this is a Sitare appreciation grant and it's a basically a residential workshop and in the B's uh, we organize a bees for the life sciences students as well as technology students. And it's a three week program. And basically it's a residential program where we invite the students for 21 days uh, for uh, train them in a different domain and build their capacity primarily for the undergraduate students or just finished their graduation to develop the skills in uh, different fields like phytochemistry, pharmacognosy, extraction, separation of the compound, and uh, to solve different problems in the societies and to work on the grassroots uh, practices and the traditional knowledge. So uh, during the BEES program, uh, we provide the assignments and the grassroots practices are uh, main, majorly from uh, five different domains that is uh, mainly based on phytochemistry or pharmacognosy, soil microbiology, veterinary medicines, um, uh, then uh, uh, medical devices. Uh, as you all know that what is the eligibility of this program, uh, the life science students or technology students of uh, doing undergraduate who have valid e uh, institutional ID as well as Aadhaar card. We can skip this, we can skip this. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. So uh, this is the, uh, as I already mentioned that uh, the structure of the bees is to provide uh, the hands-on training for 21 days to the undergraduate students where uh, they have to come for the three, uh, two to three weeks program uh, for work on grassroots practices. And before they join the uh, program, we provide them uh, different reading material so that they can start working on the provided grassroots practices. Uh, we provide them expert and uh, the mentors uh, to work on uh, different uh, domains, validate the grassroots practices. And uh, after Three weeks, the and at the end of the three weeks, the students uh, have to work they have done. Uh, in the Suri, the study for the uh, and during the please mute yourself. Keep your mic mute, please. Keep your mic mute. Hurry, you have to be careful. Yeah, please carry on. Yeah, so during the uh, peace online school, uh, the same structure is there. Uh, for the 20 days, we invite the eminent scientists and uh, different expert uh, speakers uh, from the uh, various institutes to mentor them in different domains. They provide the lecture, they interact with the students to solve their queries of the experiments. And uh, also with the lectures, they have to submit uh, different assignments we have provided and they have to write a two to three exams uh, based on the sessions they have attended. So after the 20 days, based on their uh, active participation, as well as their assignment they have submitted and the protocol they have prepared, we select 10 best students for the One Lakh Rupees Award. And later when the situation improves, we'll invite the students for hands-on training as per uh, the B, uh, basic structure of uh, this. So as I mentioned, uh, till now we have conducted four such hands-on training and due to COVID, uh, we have, uh, including this, we have conducted five, uh, we have uh, managed five online school um, for to train the students. So during the base nine, uh, they have submitted three assignments. They have worked on three assignments. First assignment was based on documentation of grassroots practices and traditional knowledge. 
uh, and the assignment for the assignment two, they have worked on uh, home experiment. They have uh, worked on that idea for the assignment three. Uh, they have selected grassroots practices and traditional knowledge from our database uh, to prepare a PAS and uh, uh, review, literature, review uh, literature of that uh, grassroots practices as well as prepare a scientific protocol. Um, apart from the lectures and assignments, uh, we had uh, interaction with the GYTI body and entrepreneurs of different fields and uh, interaction with the industrial students, industrial uh, people. Uh, if I talk about the peace and applicants, uh, we have received applications uh, from, uh, I, have mentioned, I have shown here different states um, of our country. There are 66 students from 17 different states are there in our uh, B school. Uh, this is the uh, map. Uh, so total during the base, uh, more than four, uh, 400 students from uh, 25 different states have been uh, trained under this uh, Sitare scheme, Sitare B scheme. And uh, during the online school, uh, some of the batches have worked on uh, these many grassroots practices as well as they have uh, written the review article uh, after, uh, from the selected grassroots practices. This is the list of uh, speakers we have invited uh, from different institutes uh, during B science school. And these are some photographs of uh, B school and hands on training. And uh, during the validatory, uh, we have invited uh, and scientists and our guest uh, during B spike, uh, Dr. Giri Sahani was there to address the validatory event. And uh, during B six, Professor Gagandev Khan had. Um, uh, inspired the students by telling her own story and her journey. Uh, during this seven, Professor Sayyid Hasni was there um, to chair the session, and this eight validatory address was uh, written by uh, Dr. Ramnath uh, Anand Masilkar sir. And thank you for uh, patience hearing. Uh, sir, can we proceed for the presentation by the student? Uh, let me first add a word of welcome to Dr. Sanjay Kumar, Director IHPT. Dear friends, I will introduce him later, but let me tell you that uh, we are very grateful for him to uh, join us and allocate so much time for this function. Uh, he's a very accomplished scholar, science leader, and above all, uh, a bridge builder. A bridge builder, builder of bridge between scientific knowledge and people's life. We will discuss, as I said, again, but Dr. Sanjay, I'm really grateful to you for joining us. Thank and, you so much, sir. And I'm so happy much, that you will listen to the presentation by the student. These are undergraduate students, but we are trying to generate, at that stage itself, a yearning for research so that when they grow up, they would grow up to be better scholars than we were because we were not given opportunity to do research when we were undergraduate students. Sure, so, sir. In some sense, we are trying to ignite the mind uh, early enough. And we are thankful to BIREC, Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, and Department of Biotechnology for uh, support for this program. We have been able to, as uh, uh, Mega, Mega explained to you, Mega, that there were uh, outstanding speakers all over the country uh, who have addressed the. Yes, uh, uh, you can go ahead with the presentation now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Indeed Thank an you. honor, sir. Indeed Thank an you. honor. Thank you. May I start, Karo? Yes, yes. So, Alfred, please share your presentation and you can start. As I have mentioned the sequence, please follow the sequence. And uh, I'll also uh, give that uh, list to the chat box so you can go ahead. Alfred, any problem in sharing your screen or anything? Uh, so, uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, so, have you seen the screen, sir? Is it visible? Not yet, not yet. You have to uh, share this screen. Mega, you should have asked them to practice yesterday. Uh, you should have, uh, you should go to the share button, then select the presentation, and then go to the share button again, and then it will come on the screen. Alfred, uh, if you have any problem, I can you share. don't have the presentation with you. 
I have, sir. I have, sir. So why don't you show that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That. Please, I'll let's not lose time. And keep all the presentations okay. loaded so that you can switch from one to another. Keep yes. them all loaded on your computer. So just to start, Mega. Kisi or se shuru karna na? Kisi or koi? Anybody else is ready? Let us start with that. Who is the next person? Ashita. Ashita, are you ready? Unmute, unmute yourself. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I am ready, sir. Start, start. Uh, a warm good morning to all, myself Ashida. First of all, I welcome all the dignitaries and the participants of BIS present here. It's my pleasure to be a part of BIS. I thank Bayrak, Srishti and Honeybee Network for providing such a wonderful platform. My topic for home experiment is biodegradable sea tray made up of aquatic plant Salvinia molesta, which is considered a, as the worst one of the worst weed on the water bodies. Now I'm going to share the screen. Is it visible? Yeah, it's coming up, coming up. Yes, make it a full screen. Go ahead. Um, okay. Ah. Uh, my topic for experiment is biodegradable sea tray using this aquatic plant Salvinia molesta. And Salvinia molesta is a free floating fern, which is also known as giant Salvinia, that has become a worse wheel in the pond and other stagnant water bodies. Uh, they grow very rapidly within a few days and form thick layer covering the whole water body surface. Uh, there are many cases that it has grown up to six centimeter thickness and affect the water bodies. They also provide an ideal condition for uh, breeding mosquitoes that cause uh, harmful diseases. And uh, even though they cause all these problems, they have many benefits. The extract of salvinia is used for uh, curing some chronic diseases in humans. And uh, they have high vermicomposting uh, capacity, so it is successfully used to achieve direct vermicomposting. Um, then this fern is also, this aquatic uh, plant is also used as a forage for ruminants. And it can also be used for mulching. Mulching means protecting um, the soil by covering all this dried plant materials. Uh, earlier, sawdust, composite, and paper materials were used to protect the uh, soil uh, by mulching. The evaporation uh, is reduced. The, it prevents soil erosion and controls the growth of weeds and enriched soil. Uh, and they all have all these effects, positive effects. And now, uh, we all know that it's about the biodegradable seed tray. We all know that plastic have become a major cause of environmental pollution, even though pla plastic is an inevitable part of our life. Mm, uh, so if we make uh, some small initiative to reduce these plastics by our own ways, uh, it will make a lot of change Then we can protect our nature. Now about this biodegradable sea tray, um, in commercial, there are small plastic trays uh, available, which are more fragile. And when they are broken, they become wasted and cause many environmental problems. So by switching on to this natural biodegradable sea tray, um, uh, because uh, it is fully made up of natural materials, and it also support the growth of seeds. When the seeds become plantlets, uh, these seed tray also can be uh, separated and planted along with the seed tray. It also affect, uh, add a nutrient effect uh, to soil 
and these microorganisms and earthworms present in the soil can absorb and digest all this uh, or the whole seed tray material. So it doesn't cause any harmful effect to nature. Um, this is the model of the seed tray. Uh, I have used aquatic, this, uh, the side view of the seed tray I have shown. It contains first layer of plant material uh, that is made from paste of salvini monster then a layer of charcoal, coconut peat, and another layer of uh, plant material. Then I have compressed uh, all this to make a mold, like a tray shape. The length, breadth, and depth of this uh, tray is also shown at the bottom. It is 24 centimeter, 18 into three, and it's weight about 250 gram. And this seed tray can, um, plant six uh, seeds. Then uh, this is the seed tray I have made. The top first picture shows uh, I kept it for, uh, compressed for the first day uh, on the first day. Then the second picture on the right I have made it into tray with six uh, rows, uh, six whole spits for the seeds. And there are also the coconut peat materials you can see. On the bottom, uh, small, these plantlets are coming. Uh, they have grown. Okay, this slide shows about each plantlets can be separated along with the seed tray and can be se uh, planted separately. Then after planting uh, on the soil, uh, it takes uh, within three days, the material starts to degrade with the help of uh, earthworm microorganisms and all. Um, the whole material can be degraded by them. Um, I have planted in small vessel separately uh, and they have shown a growth. And on the right side, I have also found earthworms present on them and they cause, I also found worm ca wormy cast on that. So I found that it is very useful and it doesn't cause any uh, harmful to the uh, organisms present in the soil. And there are also many research papers so that it is used for worm, um, for this production of uh, fertilizers and manures. It also moderates soil temperature, keep the keep it warm on cold nights and cooler on hot days, protect the bare soil and reduce erosion and all. Mm, the plant material, then I have uh, the wasted plant material I have used for hydroponics. For the liquid, uh, nutrient liquid, I have also added the, uh, what, this plant extract, one third of the uh, liquid is also added. It also helps in the growth of plant and nourishes them. And the remaining waste uh, dry matter, I have compressed um, for future use. I can use it later uh, as a manure uh, and I can store it in a dry form so it won't get uh, wasted or uh, get damaged. Uh, this all are my reference and thank you. Thank you all. Very good, very good, uh, Ashita. Uh, uh, I hope you will carry it forward. Are you planning to take it forward? Uh, yes, sir. I'm interested in that. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I would suggest you can set up an enterprise of this. Yes, I'm sir. sure we will get comments from the Dr. Uh, Sanjay also later, but Dr. Sanjay, if you have quick comment, you can say, otherwise we'll proceed. One quick comment would be very helpful. I think, sir, it is a very innovative thing. And if when people come such green ideas, we should really encourage them. Thank, and, you, sir. Thank you, sir. If they can develop some entrepreneurship around it, I think that that will add a lot of value to us, sir. Thank I you. think fantastic thing. Very good. Next, Thank please. You, uh, Alfred, ka share kar do, Nika. Ambalo. Yes. Hello. Um, uh, can you share it, ma'am? Yeah. <clears throat> good morning. Uh, I already good morning, shared. Everybody. Can you see this? Uh, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, good morning, sir. This is Alfred from uh, Manipur, Imphal. So uh, my topic of my presentation is a product of a chenghi, which is a concoction of uh, a fermented aromatic rice of Manipur. Uh, this is generally prepared by using a sticky rice available in the valley region of uh, Manipur. And in can you bring uh, the speaker closer to your mouth? Can you bring the speaker closer to the mic? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, this was a natural hair and skin used by a uh, folklore from the uh, by the Manipuri woman uh, since time uh, memory in memorial. So the objectives of my uh, experiment was uh, like how to popularize the medic uh, medicinal herbs available in the northeastern part of India. So we have already known uh, like uh, very med uh, like traditional herbs in different part of the India, but much has been left to explore for the northeastern region. So uh, another approach was a sustainable approach towards life. That is more organic approach towards uh, the product that we're using right now. And the preparation of Chenghi was like, took a very long time and the self life of uh, the Chenghi can't be stored more than seven days uh, normally. So uh, what struck in my mind was how to, uh, you know, increase the self life of the product that has been using for a very uh, long time by people of Manipur. And this is uh, the idea of Chenghi is not known to any other part of India. So uh, two, three ideas strikes in my mind at that point of time. So uh, first, uh, the first thing was either I have to convert into a powder form so that it can be stored for a very long time. So uh, second was uh, how, what can be done uh, like value addition to this uh, so that it, it enhance its features. So again, uh, the second uh, thing uh, was the saponification of the product. How can I store a longer, uh, for a very long period of time? So uh, forming a soap was another solution and uh, and another was like uh, uh, converting into a liquid uh, shampoo, but that was a very limited period of time for me to prepare everything. So uh, I restrict myself to two of this. So uh, like modern people, you know, so, uh, has uh, preferred more greener and milder product uh, at this point of time. So uh, the preparing, uh, you know, these are the ingredients that are uh, that are uh, that are being used for the preparation of chenghi, which has, has been uh, known uh, since time immemorial by uh, the people of Manipuri, and and these are some of the medicinal properties they they have, not only for a hair products, uh, but it has a certain medicinal values that has been used by local healers. So these are the things. Um, that I've collected and according to the data, uh, like more than, uh, more than 35 plant species has been reported uh, for the use of Chengyi, but these are the, some of the available herbs that are available in my back, backyard and I, backyard, so I could not go out of the home at this point of time. So these are the herbs that has been collected uh, by me and prepared a Chengyi solution. Uh, next slide, ma'am, please. Next slide. So this, uh, this was uh, the idea that I like to share. So uh, recognize and protect the traditional values that I've already shared uh, two approaches that is converting into solid powder form and saponification of Chengi using wood as lye by traditional approaches. Next one. Hello. So uh, this was the preparation done. Uh, so preparation was done uh, by using a simple uh, decoction of heating in a very low flame because I have uh, seen in the laboratory that how the rota evaporator works for the separation of chemicals, active chemicals from plant. So uh, they are heating in a very low flame and rotating and uh, uh, separating the plant active materials into 
a usable form. So I got the idea from that and uh, you, uh, using that, I heated the Chenghi solution in a very low flame so that it, its active compound doesn't get harmed. So uh, it was boiled for so like a cert, uh, certain period of time. And uh, so it was very difficult for me to like uh, dry the substance because it's heavy uh, because of heavy renin infall. So I use, uh, sir suggested me to use like um, hair dryer. So I dried it completely with the help of that. And after that, like four, uh, four liters of Chengi powder was uh, yielded to 40 ml of uh, Chengi, uh, Chengi powder after grinding of uh, the, the, the substance into a powder form. So I started using that and I started studying uh, the cleansing effect and uh, the physical appearance, uh, the, the solid contents of the um, Chenghi and the dirt dispersion and the cleaning action of the, uh, of the Chenghi was studied using a simple home experiment. I collected the dirt from the auto automobile part and I treated with two grams of Chengi pow uh, powder along with uh, uh, when uh, it is mixed with uh, water and, and form a suspension. I, I dropped the cotton, which is uh, collected, uh, which dirt was there. So uh, after that, I saw the cleansing effect of the, like, you know, uh, after observing for one, two minutes, the dirt was not there. So it shows like some of the cleansing property of Chengi. So, this was the idea that how can I uh, preserve it for a longer period of time? So this can be used uh, for the commercialization of the product because people prefer a more organic kind of thing these days. So this was the lye preparation I have uh, used uh, to prepare the lye for the base of the soap. So uh, as there was not enough facilities, I uh, used the wood and extracted the water after boiling and the lye water was ready after that. And decoction and powder preparation was done by fermented from ch fermented chengi, boiled at a very low heat. It was converted into a semi-solid, dried with uh, like hair dryer, solid residue was obtained and grind further. And powder form was uh, ready for use of uh, as a sample itself or powder. powder form was further converted into soap so that it can be stored for a longer, longer period of time. Next slide, ma'am. So this was the product that I got from uh, like a decoction of uh, the Chenghi powder. So, so like, uh, you know, everything uh, nowadays, like there has to be uh, something to sell. There has to be something to sell the product. So if we uh, sell this product, like this, it's all obviously very attractive kind of thing. So we can uh, bring out uh, the commercial commercialization potential of the traditional values that we have, uh, you know, um, and started practicing and uh, this can be used in future. And again, at the same time, uh, so discussion uh, in the discussion, I have uh, mentioned some of the problem and, and uh, what are the things I like to do in the future. So amidst rising popularity of uh, varieties of shampoo and conditioner in local market, there's a need to revive the traditional values. So uh, traditional values is very important and local healers has been using this for a very long time. So this, uh, there has to be proper r and uh, research and development on this field so that we can bring out the uh, best potential or best product out of it. So this was a simple home experiment using the herbal ingredient and in rice water which can be found from a back backyard. So there is no like uh, known availability of uh, the ingredients because it's often from the backyard itself. So decoction of some uh, natural shampoo powder takes a very long time. So if I produce into a powder form or something usable product, it can be used as a commercial uh, commercialization amongst the people nowadays because organic products free from toxic chemicals are preferred by people. So rice water, people know about rice water, but people doesn't know about, about Chenghi, which is a concoction of medicinal herbs. Uh, and this will be new to a lot of people uh, amongst uh, other part of India. So. For, uh, for further like work that I'd like to work in future, that is uh, done uh, going through proper R&D 
uh, value addition. Uh, if I like to preserve uh, something uh, into a liquid uh, sample, then I can do like uh, addition of, you know, uh, surfactants play a very important role in prepared, preparing of sample. So uh, if I want to approach for a greener product, I, what I can use is like uh, natural surfactant that is free from uh, sulfate. So what I can uh, use is cocoa glucosides and uh, cocoa, uh, B10 kind of thing uh, for the value addition and I can uh, convert into a more uh, uh, eco-friendly product of this uh, traditionally used uh, substance. Very nice, very nice. Very good presentation. Thank and you, sir. I hope that you take it forward. We will be happy to incubate this product. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sudarshan. So time, Apna, please manage your time. You're taking three times the more time than what you're allocated. So please be short. Yes, sir. Very good afternoon to all the respected dignitaries here. My topic is the development of an easy to use, point of care, low cost, high sensitive and non-invasive seven test panel, paper-based microfluidic device for the rapid screening, diagnosis, and prognosis of kidney stones or urolithiasis by app-based calorimetric analysis of urine in rural setting. I would like to thank my guides, Dr. Shahila, Dr. Meera, Dr. Veena, Dr. Rudhya Kumari, and Dr. Bala Subramanian. It is an alarming fact that 50% of the rural population who suffer from this kidney stone disease end up with severe complications ranging from renal failure, which can progressively lead to death. So this device is an urgent need because it will be a disruptive innovation for the people in the grassroots level in whom it will significantly improve the quality of life. This device fulfills the WHO's assured criteria for rapid tests. It is highly affordable, sensitive, specific, simple and user-friendly Rapid results are provided within 10 minutes and it's equipment free. All you need is a smartphone and it's deliverable to end users and can be distributed in PHCs and other rural health centers. The beauty of this device is that it is point of care and can be used anywhere. Because it uses urine, it is non-invasive and can be done by untrained personnel. It can be used for screening, diagnosis, and prognosis of kidney stone disease. And the point of using the seven test panel is so that it will provide information about infection, stone composition, as well as the degree of renal damage. More than 10 other disorders can also be screened for using the same device, ranging from pregnancy-induced hypertension all the way until various different types of tumors. The rationale behind the usage of the seven test panel is in adherence to the protocol and the guidelines submitted by the American Urological Association and the European Association of Urology, wherein they say that the calcium, oxalate, pH and uric acid can help in determining the stone composition, protein and creatinine for the disease progression and renal involvement and nitrite to screen for any associated urinary tract infection. So in this uh, pilot project, we have done four out of the seven uh, proposed analytes, and we have prepared varying standard concentrations and uh, estimated the same using semi-auto analyzer for standardization. Now, for calcium, we have used the arsenozo 3 method, creatinine, modified Jaffe's, total protein, biuret, for uric acid, uricase peroxidase method, and we have coated the reagents on Wattman filter paper grade one using micro pipettes uh, to create the detection zone and then used different micro pipettes to uh, add the sample at the sample zone. After drying in about 10 minutes, you can see a visible color change that can be detected even by the naked eye. And then this image was processed and analyzed using image J an open-ended software. And this entire process was repeated four times and the average was taken and graphically represented as in the observation section of this presentation. This is image J using which mean values are generated for the color intensity. This is a prototype of our device. It is 
as small as 5 into 5 centimeters. For creatinine, as you can see, an orange ring is formed in the detection zone as pointed by the arrowheads. As we go through these images, the concentration of the analyte increases, then the intensity of color formed will also be increased, as you will notice in the future slides as well. So this is the graph we have plotted using the mean values versus the standard concentration for creatinine. For calcium, you can see a purple color discoloration surrounded by a white halo. This is the graph for calcium. For protein, you can see a thick purple colored ring that is formed. And this is a graph for protein. For uric acid, you can see a pinkish discoloration. This is the graph for uric acid. Now, it can be inferred that this device is an urgent need and thereby has the capability of diagnosing and helping doctors treat kidney stone disease using as simple as urine samples. Now, in the app, based on our, uh, the results generated by this uh, test, the app will also recommend dietary and fluid intake changes that can be taken by the user to help improve the condition. It will alert the user when there's need to seek medical care and also when there's urgent need to seek for medical attention. The outcomes of this device is that doctors in urban areas can remotely treat patients from rural areas. It can help them monitor response to treatment by repeated testing using this device. And even in areas where there are no healthcare facilities or setups and in the most rural of the areas, this device can be used. These are my references. During the five minutes of this presentation, 5,666 people in the world develop kidney stone disease, and out of which a whooping number of 1,000 people develop complications because of this kidney stone disease. This is as per a study that was published as recent as eight days ago. This device that can fit in the palm of your hand is accessible, affordable, can be easily used by anybody everywhere. Thank you. I would like to thank Srishti, Bairak, and Honeybee Network, Professor Anil Gupta, and Dr. Mega Ma'am for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good presentation. Thank you, sir. I hope you will take it up for the further testing. Definitely, sir. After ethical committee approval and all of that. Yes, sir. Before you become a doctor, you should take it to market. Definitely, sir. With your <laughs> guidance, I yes, hope to do that, sir. We'll happy to help as you. long as it helps the lives of millions of people. Sure. Thank you. Next, please. Good morning, respected people and everyone. I'm Manish Kumar from Andhra Pradesh. My presentation is all about isolation and identification of bacterial and fungal colonies from the from soil. So, am I audible, sir? Hello? Go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, my presentation is all about isolation and identification of bacteria and fungal from different types of soil. So, soil is a S body. Don't. Sir? Yes, sir. Soil is the S body. It's called as pedosphere. Soil contains many gases, liquids, and a mixture of organic matters and different types of microorganisms. Soil and microorganisms live in a symbiotic relationship between each other and helps microorganisms help the soil by soil giving fertility and helps in growth of the plants. So, my, so by many types of bacteria, fungal, and protozoal and the many other microorganisms are present in the soil. Around eight to 15 tons of microorganisms are present, different types of microorganisms are present in the soil. So for my experiment, the materials required are different types of soils, plant soils like tulsi, paddy, mango, um, teak, and coconut. 
this is what and medias different types of medias and some other equipment like auto ever auto clip to better uh, test tubes paying balance and measuring system the first step in this is sterilization of petri plates so for the sterilization of petri plates we use this auto oven auto oven employs rapid sterilization so for, for this we wrap petri plates in paper with paper and kept at 170 degrees centigrade for 22 20 minutes like we wrap petri plates in paper manish, to avoid manish it is enough it is enough to say that you sterilize the petri dish then proceed for okay sir next step is preparation of media so for that bacterial and fungal colonies we use mutant agar media and protodextral agar media preparations so this is the preparation of the samples and the next step is serial dilution so the different soil samples are taken in a different test tubes and serial dilution is performed by using micropipettes next one is isolation of soil samples so the molten agar medium is poured into the petri plate and the uniform distribution of the media is ensured the so using sterile inoculation loop sample is loop full of culture is taken and uh, employed on both mutant agar and the potato extra agar media and the agar mutant agar media plates are kept in incubator and inverted position for 24 to 48 hours at 37 degrees centigrade for, but for the potato extra agar medium they kept in room temperature for 48 to 72 hours for 72 hours these are the nutrient agar medium uh, cultures the control and different cultures these are the potato extra agar medium uh, samples and the control cultures the results are these so next the microscopic observations so and then for this microscopic observations if a bacteria before we perform gram staining and the for fungal samples we perform lactophenol cotton blues uh, method so but by perform gram staining it was observed that the four out of five were gram positive bacteria and the fungal colonies observed and so the colonies of that bacteria in coconut has found in bacillus and the fungal colonies are mycorrhizal and uh, same with paddy the bacteria bacteria formed by the bacillus and uh, uh, the fungal colonies was mycorrhizal uh, um uh, mycorrhizal colonies and the mango it was found that azobacter and uh, it was same mycorrhizal for fungus for tea it was pseudomonas and for fungus it was rhizobium so for tulsi it was azospirillum and it was for fungal it was mycorrhizal so soil contains many microorganisms and that microorganisms have support to support the plants in different ways and without the use of any chemical fertilizers or any pesticides we can grow incredible growth of microorganisms of plants with the help of the microorganisms is the conclusion is that microbial diversity has a great effect of soil great, great effect in soil and effect is the growth of the plant in many ways without any chemical effects and pesticides so 60 to 80% of soil metabolism is due to microflora so these are the references i took for the samples and thank you and i would like to thank cc byra and anil gupta sir and dr mehra ma'am and thank you very much Thank you. Thank you. Please stop sharing. Yes. Avitra, please share your screen. Yes, ma'am. And be uh, specific for the presentation. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Uh, my idea is to make anti-microbial biodegradable food packaging using potato starch and onion peel extract. 
So basically, uh, biodegradable films are widely available, which is obtained from different sources. Some among those obtained from bio waste are starch, cellulose, chitosan, and protein. In these, the most reliable source is starch because of its low cost availability from renewable uh, resources and its production and abundance. I chose to use potato starch uh, because it has better filming properties. My idea is to make this film antibacterial and antifungal. For this, I used components present in the onion peel because as we can see, in our kitchen, uh, the onion, without being the need to be refrigerated or to be sealed in covers or boxes, they stay fresh for a long time without being contaminated. This is because of the components that is present in the outer scale of the onion, which is the uh, protocatechoic acid and catechol, which is responsible for the antibacterial and antifungal activity, respectively. I chose this idea because the films obtained from bio waste are either antifungal or antibacterial, but not both. So my novelty in this idea is to incorporate the use of bio waste in the potato starch film to make it antibacterial, antifungal, enhance its ability to prevent the microorganisms, increase the shelf life of the food, and enhance the characteristics of the film. Normally, a starch film is uh, readily water soluble and does not have good mechanical properties. So on incorporation of this onion peel extract, uh, these characteristics will also be enhanced. So these are the review of literature I collected before starting the experiment. And the methodology used to extract the uh, starch was that the potato was shredded and washed with distilled water and the liquid starch suspension was collected and was kept aside for the starch to settle. The wet starch was taken and it was washed again two to three times with distilled water to obtain the purified starch. For the extraction of our uh, required substances from the onion peel, the onion scales were uh, boiled in distilled water for two hours. Then the scales were filtered and the crude extract was collected. I made two types of potato starch films. It is uh, the uh, positive control which I made by mixing the wet starch and distilled water, vinegar and glycerin. Similarly, the sample film, uh, I uh, substituted the distilled water with onion extract. So I mixed the starch in onion extract, vinegar and glycerin. These solutions were heated until it was gelatinized and the gel-like substance was uh, spread in uh, different plastic box lids and uh, I sun dried it for four hours and peeled it off to get the film. And this uh, film, I used it to check the contamination by wrapping it in three different vegetables, that is tomato, ivigar, and chili. Along with this, I also did the water solubility, heat sensitivity, soil biodegradable tests, and also checked the tensile strength of the film. So this is day zero where the fresh vegetables were taken. In day one, uh, the contamination was not much seen. In day three, as you can see the negative control of tomato and ivigar, there is some contamination here and uh, very slight contamination in the ivigar. And the chili started ripening, whereas the sample is fresh for three days. And in day five, the contamination in ivigar and tomato has increased and the ripening of chili is also increased. And now, even now, the sample uh, vegetables are fresh. In day seven, the contamination in tomato and ivigal has increased. The uh, chili has been uh, completely ripened and the sample tomato is fresh. Even though the ivigal has been ripened, there is no contamination uh, till day seven also in chili. In day nine, as you can see, the tomato and ivigal has been almost 50% contaminated. The chili is 100% ripened. Even in the positive control, you can see here that is in tomato, that is a very small contamination and juice started boozing out. And the ivigal, the, the tip of the ivigal has been contaminated in the positive control. And the chili has been 100% ripened. Whereas the sample tomato is fresh, the ivigal is a little bit ripened but not contaminated. And the chili also is not uh, completely ripened. So compared to the negative and positive control, uh, the uh, vegetables covered in the sample film has a uh, better uh, properties like it did not get contaminated and it did not get ripened faster as the negative and positive control so uh, coming to the characteristic tests uh, i dissolved uh, the sample film in uh, normal room temperature water in lukewarm water and boiling water in normal room temperature water my uh, film did not uh, get solubilized and in lukewarm water and uh, boiling temperature uh, boiling temperature water the film uh, broke, but it did not get completely dissolved or degraded. So from this, I can conclude that my film is only moderately soluble in water and moderately heat sensitive. And uh, coming to the elasticity and tensile strength of the sample film, uh, by visually seeing, I can uh, see that it has a good elasticity and tensile strength compared to the positive control. Further, I will check this with uh, uh, using spring balance uh, to prove that it has a better tensile strength. And as you can see in the previous slides, the contamination was prevented for nine days in all three vegetables compared to the positive and negative control. 
And uh, since my product is uh, obtained from bio waste, which is onion paste that is not actually used, uh, this can be an eco-friendly alternative to package and preserve foods instead of using plastic. These are the complete references that are used in this PPT. Thank you. Very interesting. It has a lot of potential. Thank you, sir. Tago, please share your screen. Yes, ma'am. Is it visible now? Yes. Uh, just one second. So it's on full screen now? Not as full, uh, full screen, but you can start. No problem. Okay, so good morning to all the dignitaries and my fellow batchmates present here today. So my experiment was based on banded pods, which are self-inflating bandages. So you can you yourself can just visualize how this would look. They are basically a five to six centimeter long hollow sponge tubes that have been filled inside with cotton and certain blood coagulating agents that could help in coagulating, in increasing the efficiency of the coagulation process. Overall, it would just increase the process of coagulation at a greater rate and minimize the blood loss, and it would minimize the blood loss. So this idea was already envisaged by a foreign-based company, RevMedX, but the major drawback that company offered to us being Indian, it was that it, they sold it at a very high exorbitant amount of $100. So they were selling 100, 100 pieces for $100 that would bring down to one piece costing at 70 rupees. So by developing this organic idea, the price of the same product could be brought as low to as 10 rupees per, per disc. So the main materials that have been used in this are cotton, dried tea leaf powder, the loofah sponge. The loofah sponge, it was a naturally available sponge. So yes, it has been made use of this one and silica-based aerogel. So, so in this product, the loofah sponge, the loofah sponge it itself has an antimicrobial activity. The silica aerogel, the silica aerogel, it was responsible for absorbing the major and the most liquid portion of the blood, that is the plasma portion and tea leaf. Of course, they contain tannins and they help in coagulating, and they help in coagulating the blood faster. So I made these two cylindrical tubes. One was from the commercially available sponge and the other one was from the loofah sponge. And then I tested for both of their efficacy. So the results were like this, that when I tested for this commercially available sponge, it had a bit less elasticity as compared to this loofah sponge. And as you can see, that's a bit of aerogel is oozing out from, the, from its end. And loofah sponge did not show any oozing out. So nevertheless, the, both the samples that I have prepared were able to completely absorb the blood within 48.83 seconds. Whereas a simple cotton dab would take more than a minute to completely absorb the blood. So you can just envision yourself that it would take nearly more, less, less 20 seconds in comparison to normal cotton dabbing. So, so due to lack of proper instrumentation, I cannot continue my experiment further, but yes, it definitely requires a compressor and an air extruder so that this cylinder can be compressed into a small disc like, and then it can be packed further. It can be UV sterilized so that the low first sponge, it can be micro free. There are several other alternatives to this method, like silica aerogel is, is already existing and it is non-toxic and environment friendly. But still to bring down its cost, we can use certain organic based aerogels. They do have inorganic silica present in them, but yes, we can definitely make use of them to bring the cost at a cheaper rate. Shepherd's purse can also be used, but it's not that widely distributed and it's a wheat. So yes, it's, it can, its leaves can be made into a powdered form and they too have anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. So by using this type of, by using this type of bandages, we could clot blood at a much faster rate than a conventional cotton dab. So yes, this stands an, as an alternative and it, it sure has a potential to revolutionize the markets if it is introduced. So here are the references and thank you. Good. Sonak, please stop sharing. Yes, ma'am.
Mom, is my screen visible? Yes, it's coming. Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Sean of Sanyo. Uh, my topic for the home experiment was to compare the soap-like properties of the different types of ashes and using mango seed as a potential ingredient in uh, soap making. Now, as we know that uh, soaps are basically the sodium and potassium salts of fatty acids and they are used for cleaning purposes. Now, a soap basically has two main components. One is a potassium or sodium hydroxide and another is a uh, source of fatty acids. Now, traditionally speaking, uh, the natural source of potassium hydroxide has always been wood ashes, but even banana and plantain peel ashes can also be used as uh, potential sources to gain uh, potassium hydroxide. As for the source of fatty acids, uh, plant seed oils, for example, uh, coconut oil, neem oil, mustard oil, rice bran oil uh, are the traditional oils used in soap making and they have also been used in my experiment. Also recent research shows that uh, the mango seed kernel has a good concentration of fat in it and hence it can also be used as an oil source. Now, as already mentioned, the aim of the experiment is to compare the soap-like properties of the different uh, sources of ashes and using the mango seed kernel as a source of lipids. Now, the procedure, uh, now there are two procedures. One is a chemical procedure using laboratories, which is a bit complicated. And another is a traditional approach. Uh, I, have, uh, I have taken the traditional approach, which usually uh, requires uh, potassium hydroxide or lye and a fatty acid source, which, is, uh, which comes from the oil. Ash from the bale tree, uh, it's or uh, egle marmalos tree, uh, and vegetable peels, uh, which contain uh, potato peels and unripe banana peels, and incense stick ashes were taken separately, and hot water was used to leach the ashes uh, individually. It was followed by filtration, and the filtrate contained the potassium hydroxide or the lye. The lye produced was boiled for 10 to 15 minutes, and uh, simultaneously in a separate container, uh, oil, which uh, primarily which I took mustard and rice bran oil, they were taken and boiled for 10 to 15 minutes uh, as well before both of them were mixed. That mixture was heated for another 10 to 15 minutes and the resultant solution was tested for its soap-like properties. Now, uh, in, order to, in order to have the same amount of uh, ash and, uh, and oil for, I think the same composition of ash and oil for all the soaps, uh, similar containers were taken uh, for the experiments. And as we know that soap has this ability to dissolve uh, oil and water, which uh, usually are two, uh, two liquids which don't mix. So cups were taken and filled with oil and water and the sample used was uh, checked to see its action in dissolving these two liquids. Now, the results shown here, uh, as you could see in the very, on the very left image uh, from the top, is that uh, there are three cups. The cup on the left contained a standard solution which, uh, which had uh, a soap which is already available in the market. The second, the second glass contained the wood ash sample, the soap which was I made from the wood ash, and the third was a control. As you could see that uh, my sample was a bit better than the control, of course, but uh, its efficacy was, uh, of course, uh, a bit less than the uh, commercially available soap. The second image here uh, on the left is uh, another liquid soap sample which is available in the market. The second, the second cup contained uh, the, the soap sample which is made from vegetable peel ashes. And the third cup contained uh, the soap sample, which I made from uh, the mango seed kernel and, and uh, wood ash. And the fourth one here was a control. Now, this image was taken 12 hours after uh, I mixed the soap into the oil and water uh, cups. Initially, just after mixing, uh, the vegetable peel sample here uh, on, the, on, the right, on, the right, on the right cup uh, looked like this as compared to the standard here on the left. And it uh, looked like this uh, when compared with the control. This image here is the sample which is prepared from the incense, incense ash, uh, incense ash. But as we could see that there is a very, very uh, distinct layer of oil and water being uh, present here. So uh, the efficacy of this sample wasn't so good. Now, uh, based on this experiment, uh, although this experiment, I was expecting a bit more from these experiments, uh, but due to uh, the, uh, the lack of time and uh, uh, resources, uh, the procedure was not at par with the prior art sources. Uh, it is seen that uh, along with vegetable peel ashes, ashes from the neem leaves can also be used as a substitute to that of wood ash. So it can be uh, used as a source to extract lye. Uh, in my in my sample, which I prepared from the mango from the, from the mango seed kernel, I I usually used uh, ripe mango uh, un, unripe mango seeds. Whereas in the prior art sources, I found that uh, ripe mango seeds were actually used. So uh, another attempt using uh, to make a soap from uh, vegetable peel ash and neem leaves ash 
along with uh, mango mango seed mango seed uh, oil can be made and uh, i believe that that would actually result in a soap which would be having a similar efficacy as that of uh, the commercially available soap samples these are some of the references which i used and uh, with this i come to the end of my presentation i would like to thank uh, the organizers for uh, selecting my uh, topic for today's one of the thank you very much It was visible, Subhalakshmi. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Please share it again. Yeah. Is it visible, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. So I'm Neeti Subhalakshmi from Chennai, and uh, my topic for the as uh, for the home experiment is disinfectant from herbal extracts. Disinfectants are designed to inactivate or destroy microorganisms on an inert surface. Many of the chemical disinfectants are alcohol or chlorine based and hence have adverse effects such as skin irritation. And the major problem is that it has re it induces resistance among the pathogens. Hence, as an eco-friendly so solution, herbal disinfectant can be brought into use. The aim of my experiment is to prepare eco-friendly disinfectant from herbal extracts to kill the microbes and to check the efficacy of the disinfectant by various methods. As you can see, my hypothesis is that the disinfectant is made from the mixture of herbal extracts, which is estimated to have antibacterial and antifungal properties. The significance of my experiment is that it is eco-friendly and there is no use of chemicals. It is cost effective and it can be readily prepared at home and it is also effective in laboratory settings. It is of potential use in rural areas. The procedure for my disinfectant preparation is as follows. The neem leaves, oregano leaves, lemon, clove and cinnamon are heated in boiling water and then the filtered extract is obtained. Sweet flag is boiled separately and then filtered. 12, 20 ml of each of the above two extracts are added to the final disinfectant okay. solution. Onion, mint and garlic are individually grinded and made into juices and 10 ml of each of the above solution are added to the final product. The disinfectant is evaluated based on surface cleaning efficiency by surface quap culture, antibacterial property by the agarwell diffusion and the capacity of disinfectant by the Kelsey Sykes test. In the agarwell diffusion, it was observed that the Staphylococcus aureus showed a zone of inhibition of 20 mm and Escherichia coli showed a zone of inhibition of 12 mm. The surface swab culture, the swabs on the laboratory workbench was taken before and after the use of disinfectant. It was lawned over the nutrient agar and incubated for 36 hours. The left side picture is the swab taken before the use of disinfectant where we can see the microbial growth. While in the right one is the there is no microbial growth and it was taken after the use of disinfectant. The third test was the Kelsey sex test. It was performed for 50%, 10%, and 1% concentration of the disinfectant. In 50% concentration, at eight minutes, no bacterial growth was found after 48 hours of incubation. E. coli bacterial suspension was used for this test. Result and conclusion, the disinfectant is effective in killing microbes. It can be effectively used in houses for disinfection and has the potential to be used in laboratories with the increase in concentration. The future aspects of my experiment would be to check its effectiveness against viral agents and to increase the self life of my disinfectant. These are the references and thank you for the organizers for providing me this opportunity. Uh, good morning to all the dignitaries and fellow participants. Uh, uh, please let me know when you can see my screen. Is it visible? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm Subramanian. I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's in medical microbiology and molecular biology with honors in Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research. My topic is polyherbal formulation for respiratory tract infections. Polyherbalism is a concept which is prevailing from centuries ago in Ayurveda and respiratory tract diseases is a burden which, are, which we are facing. So my topic and my hypothesis is that uh, polyherbal formulation, which is prepared by the mixture of herbal extracts, is estimated to have antibacterial and antiviral activities of the pathogens causing respiratory tract infections. The significance of my study is that uh, it is a product from nature which will be relatively cheaper and easily accessible and eco-friendly, which can be used in both rural and urban settings. Uh, and uh, the polyherbal extract is prepared by the uh, below 14 medicinal plants and herbs, which is Ali Alpinia officinarum and garlic neem mint and the, and the and the other 14 medicinal plants uh, the evaluation of antiviral activity and antibacterial activity is performed the preparation of polyherbal extract is done uh, which in which each leaves of the herb is collected and washed which is freshly grinded into an extract and the individual extract of the each herb and medicinal plants is procured and mixed all together at a particular volume to prepare the crude polyherbal extract. The evaluation of the polyherbal extract is done by evaluating the antibacterial activity by Agarwal diffusion method, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, Klebsiella, pneumoniae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, where the organisms we evaluated their antibacterial activity. And in the antiviral activity, uh, we have done for SARS-CoV-2 by qualitative PCR screening. Uh, in Agarwal diffusion method, uh, the culture media was uh, inoculated with the organism in lawn culture and uh, agar in the agar plate, a well of eight millimeters done and uh, 200 ml of uh, the extract is poured into the well and incubated for overnight incubation. Staphylococcus aureus showed a zone of inhibition of 20 millimeter and uh, other organisms didn't show. Uh, in uh, evaluation of antiviral activity, qualitative RT-PCR is done. Uh, the preparation of viral sample, uh, SARS-CoV-2 viral sample of higher viral load, moderate viral load and low viral load was procured and it was mixed with polyherbal extract and a different incubation period or the contact period, RNA extraction was done using quagen viral RNA kit and real-time PCR was performed targeting RDRP gene and E gene. The inferences, uh, uh, we, we got in value, uh, the high viral load, moderate viral load and low viral load. Need sample, uh, need sample uh, is the sample viral sample in which polyherbal extract was not added, and uh, and we had a CT value of seventeen for high, high viral load, and after incubation with the polyherbal extract at the contact period of thirty minutes, uh, we had a CT value elevated up to twenty eight, and after one hours, two hours, three hours, the elevation was seen. In moderate viral load, uh, the need sample had a CT uh, cycle threshold value of uh, 26 and it elevated to 30 and 32. And uh, from two hours, three hours and six hours, there was no value. So there was an antiviral activity. In row, low viral load, the need sample had 30 CT value. And after incubation from 30 minutes, uh, there was no CT value which showed uh, antiviral activity. In each gene also, from comparing to need sample, to the sample uh, where uh, polyherbal extract added, 
the CT value was elevated. Increase in CT value indicates the reduction in viral load with increase in contact period. The reduction was observed in moderate viral load and low viral load samples of SARS-CoV-2. The conclusion is that the polyherbal formulation established an antiviral activity against SARS-CoV-2 and antibacterial activity against Staphylococcus aureus. The future aspects will be evaluation of other antiviral antiviral activity to other viruses which causes respiratory diseases and other bacteria and fungus and uh, in future we we are aiming to evaluate the anti-inflammatory effect also and to develop an easily accessible product of this polyherbal extract at a lower cost for for helping the rural settings also uh, these are the references so thank you to all thank you for the opportunity thank you next yes shweta yeah ma'am good morning to all the dignitaries I am Jee Swetha Devi, pursuing my B.Sc. in Final Year Life Sciences. So my home experiment deals with preservation of milk with kitchen ingredients. The main objective of my experiment is to extend shelf life of milk without refrigeration. Mom, is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Yes, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. The main objective of my experiment is to extend shelf life of milk without refrigeration by using kitchen ingredients. The kitchen ingredients I've used here are turmeric and honey, as these are commonly available for all of us and these have high nutritional values. In milk, the natural sugar present is called as lactose. This lactose is being used by bacteria lactobacillus, so which is the bacteria present in the milk. And the pH of milk is 5 to 6.5. The casein is the milk protein, which is made up of micelles. These micelles are in turn made up of submicelles. They combine together to form a casein protein. The protein combines with an enzyme called as rennet. And in presence of this lactobacillus bacteria, the pH value decreases and the casein starts to form bonds. When it's forming the bond, they interact with each other and they join together by forming gelatinous cloths. So when this cloth forms, what happens is that it leads to the separation of liquid and solid. Ma'am, excuse me. Uh, your slides are not moving. Uh, visible, they are visible. They are change, not changing, but they are visible. Yeah, yeah. You should change your slide. Yeah. Ma'am, I'm uh, changing. Ma'am, if you mind uh, uh, yeah, sharing my slide. But keep yes. on keep on explaining. Don't stop your presentation. Please continue. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, continue, so, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here... When the clot formation happens, it leads to the separation of liquid and solid. And this entire phenomenon is termed as spoilage of milk. As we know that pH of milk, uh, pH of curd is 4.5 to 5.5. So I have took the pH value on an average of 5. And uh, the milk, when the pH is reduced to 5, it indicates the spoilage of milk. So the pH varies as the temperature varies. So the next, uh, next slide, ma'am, description. And the most of the common people in India doesn't have sufficient technology for chilling the milk, which is a prime essential. By using this kitchen ingredients, turmeric and honey, I've thought of increasing the lifespan of milk without refrigeration. So as a part of my experiment, I've chosen three different categories of milk, that is raw milk, raw boiled milk, and pasteurized boiled milk. So all these three categories are mostly available to all of us. And not only in the raw milk uh, category, like 
in these strategies, but also I've chosen pasteurized milk for choosing the better quality from my locality. So as a part of this, I took four different manufacturing companies and performed MBRT method. That is methylene blue reductase test method. And along with the addition of these kitchen ingredients, I would like to vary the time of addition or, and uh, I want to study the extension of its lifespan. So firstly, I took these three categories, as mentioned, raw milk, raw boiled and pasteurized boiled milk. I've divided them into three equal parts by using the measuring jar. The first part of each category is taken and turmeric is being added and mixed homogeneously in transparent plastic bags. So I repeated this to the remaining two parts also and performed at three different time intervals, that is 8.30 p.m., 9.10 p.m. and 10.20 p.m. Then I read it with the, I put the pH value readings through pH meter and the time intervals are noted down when the pH attained its 5.0 level. Then the samples are examined under the microscope at both uh, coagulation uh, starting and coagulation ending time. In my next step of my procedure of MBRT test, for this test, I took 10 ml of milk of each type in the test tube and added 1 ml of methylene blue. I placed them all in water bath for 30 minutes and then after that, I noted their observations for every 30 minutes until it detailized completely. And which type takes more time to lose its color compaction indicates the best quality than rest of the types that are considered. Ma'am, next slide, please. Here, moving on to my observations, these are the various uh, these are the various local companies available for me and uh, for which I performed the MBRT method. Next slide map. In this type, we can observe the milk samples just before Adelaide adding methylene blue reagent and after adding them. Here, yeah, I took uh, the test tubes uh, as a test and control. So these are uh, blue and white and all. And this is the methylene blue reagent I've used for this test. Ma'am, next slide, please. For every half an hour, as I mentioned, I noted the observations and I took all the samples. Initially, all the test samples were blue in color, then gradually depending upon the quality, detailizing started. And finally, out of all them, toned milk of heritage company lasted longer without detailizing, which proves that it has the better quality than compared to the other types. Ma'am, next slide, please. And these are the observations representing testing of milk when turmeric is added. And uh, ma'am, next slide. Next slide, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. In this table, as I mentioned, I took three categories of milk and tested them at three different time intervals. Here, the T1 column indicates the time where pH is 5.0, as well as P column indicates coagulation starting time and the Q column indicates coagulation ending time. T1 minus T column is the time duration for each type in each category where coagulation started. Ma'am, next slide. This is the table representing observation of milk sample when honey is added. As honey contains high acidic pH value, that is 3.5 to 5.5, and they have high sugar values, the coagulation started early. And the time duration is also observed and noted. The below box indicates the duration of milk in each category without adding anything. These are the plain samples. Ma'am, next slide. So this is the graph where shelf life of plain milk is compared with shelf life of milk when turmeric and honey are added. Ma'am, next slide. And these are the final outcomes of my experiment. So as I mentioned, by adding turmeric, the shelf life of milk increased. And this is all done without any refrigeration. And the in the above three different categories, the raw milk, raw boiled and pasteurized boiled milk, raw boiled, raw boiled milk has, after attaining its room temperature, had lasted longer. Means it has attained more shelf life than compared to the other categories. The coagulation time also for the three different categories to an addition of turmeric is not having any particular significant values with the plain milk. 
So because of uh, acidic nature of honey, it's experiencing high bacterial activity and causes the reduction of coagulation duration. Ma'am, next slide. So these are the references of my experiment. And uh, so actually I have few more replications to be made in my experiment. I want to find the optimum time for maximum increment of life by adding the turmeric and uh, comparing in different categories of milk. Due to this pandemic, uh, I couldn't make it as we were permitted only for one hour uh, lab usage of our college. Kindly, if you permit, I would like to make these replications and I'll send my final outcomes of my experiment. Hoping that uh, this would help common people through which they can maintain their life and be more uh, health conscious. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Hello, sir. I think we are done with the presentations, right? Anybody left? So students, now uh, the time for the feedback and uh, you can give your feedback for this uh, 20 days school. Hello, sir. Anil, sir, are you there? Yes, yes. Yes. Sir, the presentations are over. Uh, we can uh, proceed for the feedbacks from the students. So we can now. Maybe we have a feedback. We could request yeah. Professor Sanjay to uh, give some quick comments on what he feels about the overall. I mean, some ideas that struck him very interestingly. Something which he feels needs more attention or more priority than others. So let us have his feedback first. Oh, and then has Manish joined? Uh, Manish Devansh, uh, yes, ah, he, sir. He has. I think so. So then, good morning, sir. Not, good morning. But you may not have listened to the presentation, isn't it? Have you? No, unfortunately, I, I missed that opportunity. Uh, I was there. Yeah. There the was some very episode. interesting. There is a quality, significant quality improvement in the home experiment this time. I mean, this yeah. experiment of home experiment has worked so well. So I will let us hear from Dr. Sanjay. Uh, I will go through the uh, online link that uh, Megha has shared. And yeah, I'll yeah. go through each. So presentation. just about five minutes we will hear yes, Dr. Sir. Sanjay and then you will have your uh, presentation. I think, sir, this was a treat. I would first say it without mixing any words. It was really a treat listening to the students. And uh, there are two, three things very startling. First of all, they touch the problem which everybody feels. And uh, realizing that thing was something very great. For example, if you see uh, when we talk of biodegradable seed tray or we talk of Chengiz, for example, I mean, Chengiz was such an interesting idea. Uh, we, we can never think that such a fermented product somebody can bring to that, uh, that level. I think uh, at least I had not thought of that. And uh, so then we, when we talk of apps for kidney stone detection, I think a lot, lot of implication. So what I realize, and I think there are a whole series of that. If I'm not taking anybody's name, they should not feel that why those names are not <laughs> taking. But I think each and every idea, in my opinion, sir, they were all a different tree of a garden. And each one needs attention. For example, now if we can take them to a second level, for example, uh, you know, whatever product they are there, um, for example, polyherbal formulation, just as an example for respiratory. If we have some animal data attached with that, if we can take it to next level, I think they will certainly find some place in the market. Because so much excitement these students have created, if, they, if we can give, give them a scientific 
further evaluation and we develop a model of entrepreneurship development i think that will add a lot of value some state government for example they have a scheme of startup Yeah. and youngsters like this they come for startup scheme their government supports for one year uh, to some of these startups and in that process they develop total all scientific data which is needed to launch a product and then government also supports them to make their own companies they give lands at very you know nominal interest rate so all those support system in some of the government systems are there but all state government does not give that sort of support if we can motivate some of our machineries like that you know these ideas should not die sir i think that their germination has already thing taken place they should take the shape of a nice burger tree or people tree whatever tree they would take the shape of i think they should be nurtured and i must salute you that from where you motivate and how you get all our young brigade get ready for making the india aatmanirbhar i think that that is the flavor i could see uh, you know what nation needs we know better not foreigners know better what our nation needs what is our resources we know better not foreigners know or any other person knows what our resources are and i am so happy that our students they had identified our, our own problem using our own resources and trying to give a shape so that an economy could be generated so a green economy and that too, I, and that that to uh, at home experiments by and large because that to at home experiment <laughs> I, i mean it was sir it was mind opening and mind boggling for me like that girl was doing that milk shelf life extension such yeah. a fantastic idea using simple ingredient now only thing is that we give them give her the right uh, uh, environment so that it goes to a logical conclusion and takes a final shape somebody was trying to make a soap for example yes uh, using local ingredient how we take it to the final um, conclusion maybe you know in the meantime i'll include some of those slides also into my presentation so that you know they will know it yeah, because sure. something on similar lines we also work right sure, 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 but sure. then then we try to take them to the field and to the yeah. to the entrepreneurs and to the stakeholders so sir i think now maybe now these guys are further nurtured so that they go to the next level i think that will be my you know firm feeling because i was very excited to see whatever they have done it so my cup if if it, if i could show you my cup of tea is still half i could not you know resist myself <laughs> listening to their presentation it's still half i could not finish it full <laughs> very nice so, index of interest and concentration i really appreciate that so we will listen so, to dr manish divan is a leader of the program that provides support for this base and also for uh, sitare program under which gyati awards are given a gandhi young technological innovation award as you know uh, so this this participants of course eventually when they join post gadget program they will also be eligible for gyati but uh, what you have said is very true that if they take the ideas further we should be able to get them uh, proper incubation support and uh, beyond 1 lakh rupees in fact that would be very useful so manish welcome and uh, please uh, share your thoughts uh, with the participants and then we will have the honor of listening to dr sanjay kumar director ihpt and uh, uh, and uh, prime minister in his recent uh, Uh, society chair address of the CSIR. He is the president of the Council of Scientific Industrial Research. In that address, he referred to some of the activities that IHPT has done. So, what greater recognition can a lab hope for than what it got very recently, just a few days back? So, Dr. Manish Deva. So, uh, uh, congratulations to Dr. Sanjay to begin with, and uh, good morning, everybody, uh, and Professor Gupta, his team. I think the uh, as dr sanjay mentioned uh, uh, this is a platform to ignite ignite innovation ability to innovate and probably a, a first channel to get introduced to entrepreneurship uh, through a battery of uh, provisions that uh, this 
online uh, this workshop uh, brings to the uh, as an access to the students so uh, it itself reflects that uh, i i apologize that i was not able to listen to the presentations but a couple of presentations i browsed through the link and the uh, uh, last one at least i could listen in person also and as dr gupta mentioned uh, all of you students who are participating uh, you have actually made efforts and uh, made efforts to utilize the available resources uh, be it uh, within your home uh, or access whichever facilities uh, are accessible to you and i think the knowledge that you have put in practice uh, and uh, made it a made it a directional effort i think that is the that is the outcome which uh, professor gupta through his uh, this particular effort wanted to see uh, people say gyanam uh, bhara kriyam vina so whatever you uh, kind of imbibed through your education formal education so far and uh, this three weeks of uh, bis workshop it it was a very apt culmination uh, by all by all means uh, <coughs> this must be the uh, this must be considered as a beginning and not the end of your journey and uh, this is the path which you have been at least able to perceive yourself uh, within these uh, uh, maybe 50 students who have participated uh, when i when i met you right in the beginning when the workshop was about to commence i think um, and today uh, i think most of you would have finished the entire course uh, and expose yourself to various facets various facets of biotech uh, that can be considered for implementation and finding solutions to the unmet needs the knowledge that you've been exposed to and uh, personal experience sharing through many dignitaries as well as uh, subject matter experts uh, that's that's the that's the bandwidth and that's the spread of uh, Uh, of stakeholders experts mentors advisors startups incubators who are there and who are committed uh, on the on, on this path of entrepreneurship leading to startups uh, culminating into tangible products and outcome <clears throat> you have uh, you have got initiated in that direction and uh, i think onus is also on you Uh, that you continue to follow this path or follow this thread and at an appropriate place at a, with an appropriate objective uh, grow deeper and uh, engage at at deeper level with the provisions which you got exposed to so as we all are aware that uh, 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 make in india atmanirbhar startup india Uh, made in india uh, swachh bharat uh, nutrition mission these are national priorities and there are lot of resources which are committed uh, to facilitate people in this direction and uh, with the commitment with the right uh, the willingness to contribute in this direction there are sufficient provisions sufficient provisions in terms of uh, get you initiated in that direction provide you access to incubation centers uh, make funds available for bright innovative ideas even at ideation stage uh, once you have nurtured uh, the idea to poc stage there are again a set of different provisions that you can set up your own company uh, become your own employer uh provide employment to you know many others also so you can become job creators uh, so once you have those then there are further provisions value added provisions you can you can actually take your startup to culminate and uh, develop a particular product uh, the thesis of uh, a right idea backed with technology and uh, 
implementation of that technology to reduce it to proof of concept or minimal viable pr prototype and the journey that requires to take it all the way for for development so that it becomes a commercial uh, commercializable product so the entire pathway is laid out and there are provisions now uh, there are role models that you can follow uh, i am sure uh, if i recall correctly the uh, the syllabus of or the structure of this workshop uh, had provisions that you were interacting with uh, some of the incubators as well as some of the startups who would have uh, you know reflected their uh, their journey and their stories to you so uh, i hope uh, earnestly that uh, uh, this particular exposure of 3 weeks and uh, this particular platform that uh, uh, byrek uh, srishti gaiti has put together under the leadership of uh, professor gupta uh, would pay a a, uh, a foundation and uh, and provide you with the right kind of uh, uh, food for thought so that you can make a conscious decision uh, in case you would like to take entrepreneurship uh, as a career for for yourself or accumulate and strengthen your technical expertise some bit more as you progress from ug to pg and acquire some more uh, skill set simultaneous and uh, and a full fledged commitment may evolve afterward but while you are progressing even in that direction if you consider it appropriate Uh, continue your engagement with the ecosystem uh, stay connected with the srishti uh, uh, professor gupta's team or the virex uh, uh, ecosystem uh, any incubator uh, learn uh, study interact follow uh, the startup ecosystem so that you stay aware where this ecosystem is evolving and uh, uh, i would not be surprised if many among you uh, would become the star performers you know of of uh, uh, in the in the coming years and uh, making uh, you proud uh, the, uh, professor gupta proud uh, as well as the ecosystem proud of your achievements uh, going forward so i wish very good luck to all the participants and as i said in the beginning also when the workshop started you have differentiated yourselves from your peers so remember that that you have the uh, have the desire uh, as well as the um, as the uh, strength inner strength to do more than uh, than your other friends so continue on that path forward and wish you all the best uh, thank you so much thank you sir over to thank you thank you thank you so much thank you thank you so friends we will have now uh validity address by dr sanjay kumar director ihbt csir ihbt uh, institute of himalayan bioresource technology and uh, there are many distinctions about dr sanjay kumar the recognition the international recognition he got for new pathway for carbon fixation and many other scientific achievements but more recently the distinction that he and his team has achieved uh, are multifold but i will mention two examples kesar was never cultivated saffron was never cultivated outside of kashmir till recently first time ihbt showed its potential in himachal and a few other places that it could be cultivated so therefore more opportunities for farmers will emerge now second heeing almost every day in gradient in everybody's kitchen we never grew him in our country it was imported from us uh, from afghanistan and first time after uh, bringing the plants thanks to the nbptr corporation ihbt could adapt them grow them and prove that he could be uh, extracted within the country so that's a great breakthrough and there are many more of this kind 
uh, with uh, in terms of uh, tea quality and tea processing in many other areas of Himalayan bioresources. Uh, what is remarkable also is that he has produced a whole range of young leaders of science and technology, particularly in life sciences, biosciences, who are distinguishing themselves in different domains. So we are very privileged to have you, Dr. Sanjay, and we look forward to hear you, listen to you, and I'm sure many students will get charged so that they might, in fact, end up, some of them might end up in your institute one day, either as an MSc or as, as a PhD student. But I can tell you, I have been to this, I have been to Dr. Sanjay's lab and seen the facilities. It is one of the finest places you can imagine in the valley, in the Himalayan environment, uh, where if you happen to be, go, be there, you would be charged not just by the human energy, but also by the natural uh, endowments around the institute. Professor Sanjay Kumar. Sanjay, are you around? Hello? Are you able to, uh, are you yes, getting my? Yes, yes, yes we can. Right. Thank you very much, sir. And it's indeed an honor uh, to interact also with your students under your mentorship. I think it was a great day for me. I think great beginning of the day, I would say, to listen to our youngsters. And we feel so happy that we are making our India stronger and stronger through these students. And thanks to Bayrek also that who has, uh, you know, thought of such idea and uh, trying to promote uh, young entrepreneurship within the country. Uh, sir, I will just share a small presentation because I was also very happy to see the presentation by the students. So I thought I'll include something which is relevant to them also. So in, in between, I was trying to do that part as well. Uh, so you are able to see the slides? Yes. Yes. So, oh, okay. So this is our institute. And uh, uh, once again, good afternoon, uh, good morning to all of you. So what I thought I will discuss today, something on bioresource to bioeconomy. And this is a step towards green economy. And I feel Bayrek is very closely associated with bi bioeconomy activities. Uh, Bayrek whole, whole idea of Bayrek itself is to generate bioeconomy. And there are several initiatives that which Bayrek has taken. And for the student in a very simple language, that any research and innovations in biosciences, which are directed towards economic activity, we refer them to as bioeconomy. And in today's presentation, I was seeing uh, people talking of a range of uh, pharmaceutical product out of uh, uh, bio, bio things. For example, medicinal and aromatic plant, they were talking of they were talking of soaps, etc. So this all comes under bioeconomy. If you talk of food and feed, if you talk of bioenergy, for example, fuels, fibers, these are all part of the uh, bioeconomy. And once it is done in a sustainable manner, we call them as a green economy. Now, if you see what I thought, I will try to take you to the Himalayas and uh, some, some of the uniqueness of the Himalayas. For example, if you see Himalaya, one of the things in Himalaya and unique thing is that we have got altitudes, you know, we have height. We can go up to 5,000 meters at height. And because of that, you had a lot of environmental diversity. So you have chance to have aromatic plants, medicinal plant, fruit plants, you know, Himachal is known as fruit basket of the country. You can have opportunity to have floriculture, you know, in the flowers when Delhi does not have flower, Himachal grows flower during that time. So you meet the country's demand. Then you have microbial resources. So I'll give you some practical examples, you know, how you, we can utilize these resources in a sustainable, sustainable manner and develop entrepreneurship. And also environment gives us some new opportunities also, right? So I'll give you some of the examples into this area. And uh, when we try to develop economy into this area, actually we try to serve our industry, we try to serve our society. These two, we always keep in our mind. And also we try to do something strategic so that, you know, nation is empowered within. So we try to, uh, you know, these are the three our major issues that we always try to think. And if you see the mission, vision of our institute is that, and mission is that, that we try to develop technologies that boost bioeconomy 
through sustainable utilization of Himalayan bioresources. So we try to do that. Now I start with the first example, you know, which uh, Professor Gupta also mentioned. And uh, we are very happy to share our this uh, contribution. You know, in our country, if you go to high up in Himalayas, you have cold desert area and uh, nothing grows there. It's a Lahol and Spiti area is almost cold. Ladakh areas, all cold desert area, hardly few grasses. So we wondered how to improve the livelihood of the people who stay there and also can we improve the environment. There were two issues in our mind, right? Then we compared with the rest of the world and we realized places like Afghanistan and Iran, they have some similar sort of terrain and they grow as footed or hing, you know. And hing we consume in our country almost every day. And we import around 1500 tons hing every year and around 1000 crores. So we give all this money to our neighboring countries. And we have all the lands and resources, but we do not have this plant species, very interesting. So we brought this plant species through proper quarantine process. Since the students are here, they should know that any seed material that we get in this country, it should be properly quarantined, it should be registered. So National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources is the central authority. So we took some time with them. So they did everything, you know, both of us worked together. Once the seed came to us, then we developed proper agro technologies, total molecular biology we did, we understood how this plant behaves because nothing was known about this plant. And then we signed an MOU with the state government and so that the plant that we got, it should reach to the farmer's field. So that's the objective. You know, suppose we get the seeds, keep it in our pocket, keep it in the lab, it doesn't help. But then we got the seeds and took it to the farmer's field. And you see the excitement. First year we saw some seeds. So farmer, we are not very sure how it is going to behave. But you know, next year, people, you know, when the plant came again, now people developed some confidence. Okay, this plant is working under our environment. So automatically our whole media is full of you. You can see, you know, almost everywhere it was covered right from guardian to karolpati, kon banega karolpati, everywhere this question was there when he was introduced in this country, who introduced this he? And uh, as uh, Professor Gupta mentioned, our Honorable Prime Minister was also excited about it. And he also did mention uh, very recently that it's a very significant move um, uh, by CSIR in this direction, right? So here, what I wanted to share with the students is that, you know, we should realize what is need of the nation. And then if we do this, those things, I think it will try to empower the nation. And uh, therefore, such activities are very, very important, right? Another example, which Professor Gupta also mentioned, I'll try to give, you know, in India, we import around 100 tons uh, of uh, saffron or kesar every year. And in our country, we hardly go grow 10 tons of kesar per year and that to in Pempur region in Kashmir. So one of our question was why it can't be grown beyond Kashmir. So we realized there are two problems. One problem was development of the corn technology. And here I must say that, you know, DBT had initially supported this project very, uh, you know, generously. And then uh, we developed this uh, corn te production technology. And then we do did ecological niche modeling for the student. They should understand if we had to grow, you know, any crop cannot be grown in any part of the country. But if we know the precise environment, then we can predict where it could be grown. So we did, and this process is known as ecologically ecological niche modeling or ENM. So we did this ENM and we identified several areas in Uttarakhand, in Himachal Pradesh, in South India, also in a place like Uti. We conducted trials. So we had the bulk production technology with us. And now we did trial and then we did total proper chemical analysis on the quality. And now we know that saffron can be grown beyond Kashmir. So now Himachal, now the, now the thing is that suppose we generate this knowledge and do not diffuse it to the farmers, then that becomes our failure. So then we interacted with the state government, we signed an MOU and now they, we are working very closely with the state government so that all our saffron is grown now in the farmer's field. 
right? So that's what we do. We develop a technology and then we work on its diffusion uh, to the right stakeholder. And now you can see two years down the line, you can see Himachal will be yet another hub of saffron production, right? So that's how, uh, you know, uh, again, the thing, let's identify the right problem where we should focus upon and then we move forward. Another example I'll tell you, you know, Himachal is known as fruit basket of the country. Why? Because we are known to grow apples. And you must be aware that earlier India was not growing any apple tree. Hundred years back about, you know, what there was a one person known as Mr. Stokes. He brought apple to the country and he was, you know, he used to send Himachal. So in Himachal and uh, nearby area, Jammu, Kashmir. So he introduced apple in this country. And now today, uh, you know, we are the major producer of apples. But then what happened, you see India is large. And if you see the northeast part of our country, uh, they do not grow any apple. And all apple used to go there, you know, from uh, Kashmir. And you can see the amount of carbon footprint it takes for the transportation purpose. Then we said, why can't we grow apples in northeast part of the country? So we discussed with the local authorities there. And again, we interacted with the state government. And again, we interacted with the farmers. And around four years back, we had introduced apples. And farmers are so happy that whole everything is covered now with the literature that, you know, apple is grown now in Northeast. And they are very happy, you know. They are ready to sell it in the market. So what we did, that we did the tissue culture technology so that we can develop the root stock. You know, apple cultivation needs a root stock. So we did that. Transfer to a company. Now that company produces to root stock, and then we interface with that. And um, uh, today you see Northeast is growing, Mizoram is growing uh, apples today uh, very efficiently. And now we introduce in Meghalaya, Manipur, and Arunachal Pradesh also. And the uh, plants are working very, very well. So Mizoram has become a success story, and other states with seven sisters will become again success stories in time to come, right? So again, an example, if you have the right science and technology, you can, that's how change the landscape of the nature. Another example, one more example I'll give you. You know, India is known as the country of diabetics and we do not want to eat therefore sugar. But then we should have alternative to sugar, right? So there are two alternatives to sugar. One is stevia and another is monk fruit. Our country does not have monk fruit. And uh, we thought, why not we in, in, introduce this monk fruit into this country? And this, uh, mo this monk fruit has a molecule known as mogrosite, which is 300 times sweeter than the sugar. So again, through NBPGR, we introduced this fruit in this country. And once we brought it, you know, we, we did not get any flower. So uh, we, did, we got flower, but we could not get any fruit. Now we developed a technology for developing fruits. And now we are ready with the transfer and diffusion of this technology. And for that, we signed an MOU with the Chamba area. And very soon you will see now monk fruit also making a sensation in the nation as a alternative to, you know, a sweetener. And this will be very good for sweet watchers also. And it's fully approved. So monk fruit is yet another thing that our institute very recently introduced. Now I give you another example and another story. You know, in Himachal, whenever I interacted with the farmers, I used to see a lot of barren land. And I used to ask them why your land is not being cultivated. They said, sir, here we get a lot of monkey problem, monkey menace is there, wild boars are there, deers are there. They come and destroy our crop and we have nothing left, right? And sometimes rains are also irregular. So what we thought that we should give them a crop whereby, you know, all these wild animals do not come. And for wild animals, then we started cultivation of fruit trees in the forest because they, they also need something to eat, right? So we need to uh, uh, strike a balance uh, between, uh, uh, you know, human and wildlife. So we did that. So now for the farmers, what we did, we started giving them aromatic crop. And one of the crop we gave them, you know, wild marigold. This wild marigold is one such crop which is not touched by monkey. Monkey runs away with this crop. Um, no deer comes to there. No wild boar comes and eats this crop. So it's a fantastic crop. 
and this oil we used to import from africa uh, 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 and you know so we thought why can't we start growing this wild marigold and today let me tell you himachal is the top state in the country in terms of wild marigold oil production and we make uh, around uh, uh, you know 6 tons of oil per year and we farmers are almost getting approximately 1 lakh rupee per hectare which is 2 to 2.5 2.5 five times higher than the traditional crops right so here not only farmers got remuneration but also environment is improved because now unutilized land is being utilized right so there is improvement in the environment soil improvement is there so these are some of the examples and here what what was our role we had the right variety so our institute developed the right variety we give them we give them processing technologies and then we link them with the market right so these are the three things which we did and then we made a uh, you know um, society of the farmers so the all the farmers were grouped together everybody was given the same technology somebody had one canal land somebody had two canal land they were all small farm holders but we all of them we gave them all this land and today we change the scenario of the farmers so that's how uh, you know we keep on empowering our farmer here again we identified that where the problem lies where you, we should be attacking right and then it made all the stories everywhere whether times of india or down to earth everyone covered another now i'll tell you another thing you know what happens you know among the student also there was a presentation on indigenous medicinal herb and what happens most of the time these medicinal herbs are not cultivated and because of that they become endangered and here i am giving you one example picuriza curva it is one such species which is used to treat the liver diseases and uh, it is extensively used in ayurveda and people used to go to the forest and try to harvest it and nobody cultivates it then we thought and this plant is almost endangered endangered means uh, it's you know the number of plant species is very less and almost it is you know getting threatened so that this species would disappear after a while if it is not being cultivated so what we did our institute what we did actually we developed proper tissue culture and mass propagation technology for this plant species and not only then we so lakhs and lakhs of plant can be produced in the lab and then we interacted with the guys who used to harvest wild from the field and we interacted with them and now those people who used to harvest the plant from the wild now they take the plant from us and put it back into the environment you see the plant which is was almost at the verge of extinction now we started rehabilitation of those plants into the natural habitat and now this will change the scenario right so when we talk of you know we all are aware that we grow a lot of wheat and rice but there is hardly any emphasis on cultivation of these plants and here scientific institution can play a very significant role in terms of giving and offering the right technologies and then doing the hand holding so that's how we do right now i'll give you some examples that you know sometimes you have lot of resources but then what do you do with that resources and one such resource i, I gave you example of this bamboo you know our uh, nation even northeast part himachal we grow lot of bamboos but then what do we do with bamboos except for building material that's very important thing but what else could be done using this bamboo so that people get more money so we you know in north east there was a tradition of developing some food items so we empowered them that how to they should be processing those bamboo based food items number one we did that and secondly we try to we said that bamboo can be very nicely converted into charcoal and that charcoal is now you can see it is used as a face pack it is used in toothpaste and so many applications this charcoal has and uh, uh, you know there is a unifact limited in uk it buys charcoal from us this bamboo based charcoal so now entrepreneurship developed right around this now this bamboo we realize it has got lot of cellulose so why can't we convert that cellulose into yarn so our institute develop a technology for converting uh, you know some of you are biology student 
they are all aware that plant has a lot of cellulose and we you know depend only on cotton plant because cotton plant just gives you pure cellulose but we using lab intervention we can also make cellulose and here from from bamboo we can make the cellulose and not only from bamboo even so many plant species now we have developed a technology for making fiber out of several other plant species and they can be used in a textile fiber and advantage here i'll tell you later you know what is the advantage of doing this so this can again now this right now we are working very closely with our msme sector and trying to transfer this technology so that you know our msme sector is further empowered using this yarn based technology right so any material uh, because i saw you know uh, some of the uh, one fern one ashita i think the first presenter she converted fern into that seed tray so very nice version and here we did some improvement and we converted that uh, you know plant some such plant material to cellulose it can be converted to ethanol and so many other things right yet another example i'll give you you know in our uh, himachal we grow a lot of tea and in places like assam darjeeling there are also tea grower states so there were certain things we did in tea so not only we developed agro technologies we also helped state to get the gi status of kangra tea right then we developed certain technology for example you know in tea you that what you get brown color in tea that is because of the catechin powder in that tea right and then uh, this catechin powder has a lot of advantage for example we showed that it is a inhibitor of sars cov virus and also it can delay the senescence process so and also it has sun protection effect so we developed a range of product using this catechin and also tea has a specific molecule known as cyanine which calms the mind so that you know whenever you take tea why you get calm because it has a molecule known as cyanine right so using cyanine and catechin we developed a range of product for example you have tea ready to serve tea you have then you have tea based vinegar you must not have heard of this and very recently we transferred the technology for these two items to one of the companies and they will be making soon we developed a hand sanitizer based on tea and there are five different companies who are making it now then we made tea based soap again six seven companies are there which are making this and let me tell you this soap does not use sds or sls you know sodium hydroxide sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate which are very toxic ingredient and our soap does not use any of them all natural ingredient right so range of product we not only developed but also transferred our technologies to the right entrepreneurs i'll share with you who are all those entrepreneurs who are using our technology and uh, you know empowering our society then i'll another example i'll give you and i'll give you series of example where we did lot of value addition uh, i was talking about uh, sweetness and i gave the example of mong fruit that was a new crop that we introduced and our institute also takes credit in terms of giving stevia based technologies to the farmers today there are nine different farming farming group in punjab in uttarakhand in uh, chatisgarh area in orissa who are using our stevia cultivation and there are two entrepreneurs who are making this stevia based liquid products right they are already in the market uh, so you go to any shop you will find this him stevia and uh, we develop this technology right so here we do not only give that uh, raw cultivation technology but also add value to that so that entrepreneurship could be developed right <clears throat> another example i'll give you you know floriculture in india floriculture has enormous uh, potential and uh, you all will be surprised to know that even combs and bulbs of lilium we import in this country even tulip bulb we import in this country even kerala lily bulb we import in this country can you believe this all these flowers are imported can you believe uh, what is happening so we thought why not we empower our nation by floriculture crops also so that we can save a lot of revenues so we now developed a floriculture mission 
we are giving agro technologies and processing technologies to the farmers and farmers are getting money and just to give you some idea that do farmer get any advantage or not here you see floriculture gives you lot of money and it's a money based thing just from 5 square meter 500 square meter very small land you know 10 meter by 50 meter or uh, 25 meter by 20 meter land if you have got and it will give you more than 1 lakh rupees per year right so that's the power that the floriculture crop has got so just wanted to flag this issue and then once you talk of floriculture then novel methods come you know you can, you always uh, can develop some novelty for example here i am showing you hydroponics and aeroponic technologies where it is a soilless cultivation inside the lab not inside the lab but inside a, a controlled chamber and you know advantage here is the plant or any crop which takes say 120 days or more than that uh, for that 120 days become just 55 days 135 days become just 58 days so th this is the advantage you know uh, you get uh, uh, by adopting this new technologies all right so now we are uh, making and extending all these things to our um, uh, farmers also and they are adopting these technology and then once you have floriculture you can do so many things for example you can extract natural colors and dyes and recently there was a company in jalandhar who is making uh, lipstick and other products custard etc using our natural uh, color extraction based technologies and uh, you can see now you can apply as much lipstick as you want it is not going to harm you it's like eating uh, um, some flower you know if you are applying lipstick so we are trying to make uh, human life healthier as much as possible right another dimension i wanted to share with the students particularly uh, you know in our rooms we keep so many plants and the student must be aware you know we use air conditioner we use computers so we use various type of paints and they emit various type of noxious gases like carbon monoxide formaldehyde xylene toluene etc so our institute what we do we try to see that which plant can absorb which gas more efficiently for example here i am giving you one example very recently our this paper came that you know areca palm this is very useful to absorb carbon dioxide and vocs uh, from the room so in our rooms if you keep such a potted plant it will be helpful you know in terms of removing this volatile organic compounds uh, which is being emitted from our acs and computers and things of that stuff right so now not only this knowledge we did but now there is a entrepreneur there are two guys who are working around this they just make a you know whole compendium of which plant say for example in hospital which plant should be supplied in uh, uh, you know offices which plant should be supplied so entrepreneurship has been created now and uh, two startups are there and they are working uh, with us uh, on to uh, such things right so anything which you find useful can be converted into some useful product i purposefully included this slide because i was excited by one of the presentation of a student uh, who was trying to convert this traditional knowledge into some medicine and here we very recently you know in himachal there was a, a traditional folklore which used to say that if you have these two plant species one is sizes quadrangulus which is known as hadjor and nirgundi or vitex nigundu right if you use bana we call it in local language so if you have these two plant species they can be very helpful in terms of you know improving your bone health so we said what is the scientific base of it so we did complete analysis of these plants and now we know precisely uh, what are the Uh, molecules in this plant so we prepared a standardized extract of this plant and then we did thorough animal studies and we created a model and then we there we now precisely know that through which pathway these molecules will work and we developed a technology to delay or to avoid the cartilage destruction right we developed now that technology and not only we developed then we transferred this technology to one jalandhar based company 
and they took up uh, this technology and they are, now they are in the process of uh, launching this cream into the market and also medicine into the market so all those people who take uh, you know undergo this uh, knee based surgery it will be taken care of right so just wanted to share with you similarly if you talk of bone health then vitamin d deficiency in india is very prevalent and so we developed a technology of shiitake mushroom whereby just within two months time you know you can develop this mushroom and it has got enough uh, like for example if you take 500 mg uh, of uh, shiitake powder or you know 350 mg of dry shiitake powder it meets 100% of your daily requirement of vitamin d2 right so we developed this technology now how to do diffusion so for diffusion what we did we shook hand with surti cluster of msme you know in india we have micro small and medium enterprise uh, ministry so they supported us and now there are three clusters have already been funded and uh, 750 entrepreneurs are associated with us and they all make mushroom mushroom based powders and they all sell it in the market right so you can see science and technology can be unless you diffuse it it will may not make much sense so we try to see various methodology how to do diffusion of our technologies right <clears throat> but value addition always remains at the center part uh, i'll give you one more example you know a buckwheat or kuttu kata you know during our fasting period we always eat this kuttu kata or buckwheat and you know it is grown in himalayas again in cold desert areas and people had almost stopped stopped growing this particular plant species with the plea that there is no value addition and they do not get enough money so now we made some noodles bars morning cereals a range of products and again through msme uh, very soon uh, this will be funded already a decision has taken place that it will be funded and very soon this products will be available in the market for general use you know just beyond Uh, and you know advantage here it, it is it is gluten free so anybody who has got some allergy um, with wheat uh, they can have uh, uh, this uh, gluten free buckwheat product with them now another dimension i wanted to share with you you know uh, our country grows lot of fruits but around there is 25 to 30% we lose you know as a post harvest losses so we thought why don't we develop some technologies whereby you know uh, this uh, losses could be minimized and one of the major issues when you have to avoid losses is to you have to remove water and there are various ways of removing water like sun drying oven drying but they lose they lead to loss of nutrition for example sun drying around 40 to 45% oven drying around 40% so our technology there is hardly 10% loss of the nutrition if you use our technology and we have, what we are seeing here is all dried fruit they just look just like natural and they retain their aroma they retain their freshness everything is retained the taste everything is retained and we do not add any preservative no sugar nothing is added so it's a fantastic technology and uh, one person is there now that person supplies all this to five star hotels we asked them why yeah, why don't you supply to general market also but that person has so much demand that they just meet the requirement five star hotel then another dimension i want to show you right for example if you go to himachal pradesh everywhere you find those the standard food items we thought why don't we popularize our ethnic cuisines whether in himachal like for example Uh, if you go to north north east they have fantastic cuisine if you go to uttarakhand they have fantastic cuisines but those cuisines are not available to the people or if they are available they are lot of preservative so our institute developed a technology for preservative free and now there are six entrepreneurs and uh, you know whenever there is uh, some calamity like uh, flood or any such situation our technology become very handy uh, we supply around 3 lakh or 5 lakh uh, you know numbers whenever you know we can supply in huge numbers all these things uh, i want to to share you know some of the things which touch the local things you know uh, nowadays you must be seeing in the market you get range of products and our country had a tradition you can see nowadays protein based so many things come na whey based thing xyz i don't want to name the brand 
but so many things come and if you read them carefully they are not healthy at all uh, i can tell you several reasons why they are not healthy so what we thought you know in india we have a tradition of eating sattus like barley sattu um, chane ka dal sattu all those sattus we have a habit then we combined a proper combination and we converted those sattus in a format with proper uh, scientific interventions that you can convert them into any sort of drink that you want or you can convert them into the form of this bar right and uh, so protein based bar and also we can convert all our local resources grains into this sort of bar and these are these become so healthy you don't add any sugar you use either honey or jaggery in, in making this you don't add any preservative and now there are there are eight different companies uh, who are now making our uh, these sol- products and uh, selling it in the market right another dimension i wanted to sh- uh, discuss uh, with the students you know fatty acid source it's a very uh, you know desirable thing in our country because everybody is not getting enough fatty acid particularly omega 6 fatty acid and omega 3 fatty acid or and you know algae particularly micro algae is a very good source like chlorella uh, is or spirulina they are very good source of such fatty acid so to make this fatty acid available so we made a product and not only this for this fatty acid but we also ensured that they have enough zinc and uh, iron which is a major malnutrition pro- problem in our country so once we developed this product we created four or five entrepreneurs and now we linked our this program with the poshan abhiyan to combat malnutrition you know poshan abhiyan is a abhiyan of uh, government of india to supplement our youngsters and the lactating mothers to meet their zinc and iron requirement so we linked our this product and technologies with the poshan abhiyan and now these are being served to those children and uh, women and uh, they are getting a lot of benefit right so these are some of the things around plant stuff i thought i will share now i will shift gear slightly uh, towards microbial world because microbes have a lot of advantage and one of the thing i must share with the student and they must be aware that our country imports around 70% of its enzyme needs 7 to 20% and there is a one company novazyme which meets all the enzymatic needs of the country and enzymes as our students must be aware they are bio catalyst and they are used they have lot of implication in various industry whether you talk of oil industry whether you talk of textile industry whether you talk of bakery industry bread for example everywhere enzymes are used right and one of the sectors so we thought why not should why don't we empower our country with various enzymes and microbes are the fantastic source and so one of the enzyme that our institute identified was l asparaginase i see some mbbs students also in the gathering and they will all understand that whenever there is acute lymphoblastic leukemia always we treat the patient with l asparaginase and all this enzyme is imported so why can't india make it and uh, so our con- we our institute it made one enzyme and it's a fantastic enzyme if you see and if you see this enzyme compared to all other whatever there is the market no such enzyme exists till to date and so we developed the complete uh, upscale technology for production of this enzyme and this enzyme is now ready for uh, you know commercialization so here this technology is still looking for an entrepreneur and i am sure that the next time when i'll have a chance to discuss with you our this enzyme will be the out there into the market so that's how we try to empower our nation another thing i will try to show the power of uh, microbes you know our cold desert areas uh, or people who stay in the cold areas and people sometimes staying in the plains may not realize it you know night soil or fecal material degradation is a very strange problem we go to toilets we go to washroom and we have a water system we have proper toilets it goes away but people who stay in cold desert areas they they everything is frozen so their fecal material or night soil is not degraded at all can you imagine this no you can't even imagine 
So what we did, we went to those places and we identified some of the microbes which can function at freezing temperature. We made a cocktail of them. And now in Ladakh, in Sikkim and uh, some places, uh, we created an entrepreneurship and they are using our this microbial consortium over the last three years. And now, uh, you know, earlier because fecal material was not getting degraded, their house used to be full of bad smell. And now since they start using our uh, microbial consortium, their house is perfectly fine. So you can see how the biotechnology or molecular biology or the even simple things, microbes can change the life of the people, right? And now it is in the hands of the people and they make themselves and then they use it. And another application of this is then whatever biofertilizer you get out of it, uh, this can be uh, used for uh, fertilizer. So you don't use chemical fertilizer. So places like Lahol and Ispiti, which are very serene areas, it can be, uh, you know, a boon to them. And uh, today I saw uh, one instrument talking about potato-based uh, uh, bioplastic film, fantastic project. And here I just want, I thought I'll share our, this one also. We have identified one bacteria where, uh, you know, around 70 to 80 percent of its zybate is nothing but bioplastic. And also it makes one uh, blue colored uh, pigment, which has got uh, implication in treating the cancers. So this bacteria is so, so useful. So we developed this complete technology. And now again, entrepreneurship is again waiting here uh, for this. Now, one thing I wanted to show, you know, if you are observant enough, sometimes you come up with a thing which is very unique product. And uh, this went to the market and uh, a very nice story. You know, this was again funded by DBT, one of our initial projects. So, <clears throat> You know, if you go to high altitude like Kunzam Pass, which is in a spiti area around 15,000 feet, you get this plant, you know, very luxuriant. Can you, you don't see any water. It's just going under the uh, stones and this water and this plant is always green. So we wondered what this plant has got. So we tried to analyze the plant systematically and we came out with one of the enzymes and this enzyme is known as superoxide dismutase and this can actually scavenge free oxygen radical. You know, our body, whenever we take oxygen, it is converted into oxygen free radical. And this oxygen free radical is very deleterious. It damages our DNA, protein, etc. So there is a need to scavenge that superoxide radical. And you have the enzyme which are known as superoxide dismutase. Advantage of, you must all be aware that uh, proteins are degraded the moment you heat it, right? And this protein you can autoclave it, means you can heat up to 120 one degrees Celsius or 15 minutes, nothing happens to this enzyme. So this enzyme has a lot of potential. Now you, we engineered this enzyme further by changing one or two amino acid and you can do this autoclaving three times and this enzyme is not getting killed. So that's the power of biotechnology, right? And now this enzyme we gave to one of the companies, Calcutta based company, which supplying now throughout the world is our enzyme. And uh, advantage here is if you want to get this enzyme, now you don't have to go to that plant because we cloned this gene. Now this gene is in bacteria. Whenever you need it, you grow overnight and you get this enzyme, right? So one side, you save your environment and another side, you develop an economy out of that. So th this is uh, yet another example, a class example of, uh, you know, uh, how you can convert your useful thing into a something product. Uh, Professor Gupta was asked, uh, uh, you know, describing about discovery of one of our pathway. And uh, let me tell you, sir, uh, you know, this pathway this we discovered from our high altitude area because we used to work, a, a, you know, at a 4,200 meter, and advantage, so what we identified that this pathway is so potent, which can enhance the carbon gain by 10 per, uh, by 30% and reduce the nitrogen use by at least 20% or 30%. So where, where we are applying 100 kg nitrogen, we use only 70 kg nitrogen. And it used to be taught in University of Minnesota also. And now very recently, you know, F1000 prime group has identified 
as a, one of the most important work to reduce CO2 losses. So for climate change work, for enhancing photo things, it's very important. Uh, one last few slide I wanted to share with the students that, you know, although we do so many things, but we also serve the society. For example, during this COVID-19, we do some COVID testing, although our institute was not empowered initially, but we do it. So just wanted to share with the student that we should also serve the society whenever society is in desperation. And whatever we do, we always try to take it to the society. For example, you can see here a series of technologies which we've transferred to the people, you know. And it's not a saying that we are transferring this technology, but it is to tell that we have developed some entrepreneurship in the country. We try to empower our country through that. So this was something wanted to share with our student and last few things which I always you know, feel that how we should be going ahead. First of all, I always feel, sir, I think teachers are a very great source of inspiration. And like if you see the life, life of uh, late Sri Abdul Kalamji, uh, our former president, he always said that if he had not learned from his teacher, uh, Sri Subramaniam Ayerji, how the birds fly, probably he could not have developed the passion to become a uh, what he was today, right? So we should uh, try to take as much as possible from our teacher. We should always try to read some good books. For example, if you see, see uh, Venkat Raman, he always says that if he had not read this book, Sensation of Tones, he could not have understood, understood the basis what how the science move ahead in life. So books are very important. And third is serendipity. I always believe it that always look for some new things. Not necessarily what you are going to look for is what you, what you are going to get. Maybe you get something new. Don't ignore. And the value of serendipity is pretty high. And last thing I would say that you should always develop critical thinking. Don't always believe what others have said. If this had been the case, probably what Raman discovered on the light phenomena, he could not have discovered it, right? So apply your own brain. Don't be part of the folk like, you know, this sheep so that uh, you are not identified or you are just part of the cry. Try to be unique so that tomorrow, you know, you get some of the, uh, you are decorated by some of the award like Shante Saru Bhatnagar Award or even, you know, which is one of the most pre prestigious award of our nation. Or if you move ahead, Maybe one of you are Nobel Prize winners and uh, uh, value here is not important, but more important is how you give credit to our nation. And this is just a scene of the ceremony, how Nobel Prize is offered to the people, right? So thank you all so much. And uh, thank you, Professor Gupta, sir, that you gave us the opportunity to share some of our thoughts with the students. And uh, I must tell you, sir, that I was charged the way a student has presented their work, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank and you. I must say that you have charged them with a dream that will uh, make them lose their sleep uh, for a long time to come in years to come because uh, aspirations. And Dr. Kalam, who was a very dear friend, used to say that, you know, small dreams are a crime. What you have said is, uh, Smaller dream is a bigger crime because people get satisfied with too little too early. And you have raised the bar very high. And this bar that you have raised will keep them unsettled and impatient with inertia. So thank you so much. Really very inspiring. And we really appreciate your contribution. You're charging them and you're putting a sense of responsibility in their mind that they must not be satisfied easily. And what a great pride we will have. And we'll remember this day. We will remember 9th, June, 2021. If any one of you, my dear friends in this class, make really proud us proud, the country proud by your distinctions, we will remember that you were charged with this sense of aspiration and responsibility today. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll spend a few minutes on... Uh, the feedback, and then we'll close. Sure, sure, sir. Just a few minutes, yes. So, friends, we are open now. Anybody wants to make any suggestion, 
in, for improvement in the base program? Uh, how can it be more useful? How can we be more helpful? Anything that you want to say, you're welcome. Anything you did not like? Go ahead. Anybody can start? We were some messages in the chat box, which were- Yes, yes, I did me. that because I felt that some of them can put their comments in the chat. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, Seanik has put some suggestions for in uh, He was very happy with those lectures, very nice. Anybody else? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, sir, first of all, I want to thank you, Srishti, and uh, you and uh, Mega Ma'am for arranging this program for uh, undergraduate students like us. Uh, the one uh, experience I have in a whole workshop is that uh, what we think in undergraduate is not a, just a, it's just not a biotech. Like there are multiple fields of biotech, and there is a strong uh, demand for biotech. Like uh, for my point of view, I used to think. Like biotech is such a limited sector, but after uh, this workshop, I, I, my thinking has changed, and I am thinking like there are n number of opportunities in biotech. So, thank you for realizing me that. And one, one, the this last session for from Sanjay Kumar sir has really charged me up. Like uh, I have interest in these areas uh, from the beginning, like agriculture in herbal and aromatic plant. So, sir, I would request you to arrange uh, some training for us in your institute. That is one request. Thank you. Thank you so much. Most welcome. I think uh, it, I think it will be such a great pleasure if our youngsters come and try to understand some of these things. Most welcome. Good, sir, good, anytime, good. whenever he writes to me, I think it will be a great yes, pleasure. Yes, now we will arrange for all those of you who wish to visit IHBT. It's sure, a safe sir. place. We will arrange something like that. In fact, visit to Center of Excellence, Manish, is a good thought, which we may consider in future. Uh, apart from the award that we give, we could also facilitate their visit to some of the centers of excellence where they can spend a week or so uh, when things improve. Anybody else, please? Hello? Yes. Uh, good morning to all the dignitaries and my friends. I'm Ji Shweta Devi of Fine Year Life Sciences, and I'm so glad to do my uh, feedback on this BIS9 workshop, sir. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, Bairat for giving me this fabulous opportunity. These 21 days fruitful session had helped me to pour more knowledge. The lectures, assignments, quiz, this all we took part, all of them had laid a great part in empowering uh, tremendous knowledge, sir. A great support was given by all the professors and lecturers. Swisti had uh, helped and showed a wonderful path to lead our further studies. Many of the things uh, we learned are so innovative and they are very helpful. We learned uh, so many unknown and uh, the subjects were dropped deeply, which were crystal clear. Finally, I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart for this wonderful opportunity, sir. We would look forward for such great platform further. Sure. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good, good afternoon, sir. I really have no words, sir, because these three weeks have been um, wonderful, sir, because especially since we are all in lockdown and, uh, you know, lots of logistical issues in our education right now, this has been such an eye-opener, mm -hmm. sir, because I am very sure um, we wouldn't have been exposed to so many different fields, so many experts, so many wonderful people, sir, more than anything, who are willing to help us out. Uh, such inspiration, inspiring work. And um, it, it's, it's been a wonderful three weeks, sir, starting from, uh, you know, uh, every speaker took went out of their way to connect us to the topic. So taking things that we understand about, then going to the extent of explaining the um, uh, how complex the field is and how innovative it is and talking about how we at the student level ourselves can come up with such innovations and inspiring us to do the work sir getting us to think and it, it's been wonderful sir especially because I personally always have felt that each one of us are chosen to uh, 
specialize too early on even in our graduation so we never get exposure to other fields and um, personally for me i felt that this has really opened our minds of how everything is interrelated with each other and how we must have an understanding of everything else sir in order to even enhance our field further because finally it is the uh, amalgamation of all our different sciences and uh, uh, knowledge that is going to help the people sir so thank you so much sir for all the expert lectures and all the research and all the guidance and uh, it's it's just been i think one of the best few memories of my life sir thank you so much sir. and you must not forget to write short communications about your home experiments to some journals definitely type of, sir type of possible type of i was publish. thinking uh, and don't mind if they are rejected an original research article if they are rejected first time second time don't mind there is nobody in the world i know of whose work has not been rejected or sent for revision there is nobody so therefore never feel diffident if your first publication is not rejected i had the great fortune in 1981 that my first publication was accepted in interesting journal when i was young like you but it's not always so most of the kind it doesn't happen that way and in that case we should not feel diffident so yeah. go ahead Thank yes next please anybody else we will take another 2 3 minutes any improvement anything that you wish wish to be done differently Um, yeah arwa uh, good afternoon sir uh, sir uh, the three weeks have been wonderful uh, i had one suggestion sir uh, the starting one week uh, talks about uh, the legal aspects and uh, the basic aspects uh, so for the next uh, bis workshop uh, it can be arranged that these uh, lectures are pre recorded so one month prior to the bis workshop students can go through that so that we have extra one week uh, in which more workshops can be arranged for example uh, in that extra uh, one week uh, one entire day dedicated to bioinformatics for example uh, and on that platform uh, hands on workshop like how to uh, do phylogenetic analysis of the viruses like these are easy topics and can be done in like 45 minutes or so so that will uh, give us more exposure we have been exposed uh, enough and it's been incredible but uh, this can also be done very good thought very good thought let us think about it i mean if you are willing to work hard and take some of the lessons offline then we can add some more content sure how many sessions every day you think are optimal arwa i think uh, four uh, sessions a day are optimal and one one hour session each are optimal uh okay. all right anybody else any critical point is the nothing improves by only appreciate we also need some criticism somebody who comes out with a ruthless criticism will get a copy of my book as an award so now there is an incentive be as ruthless as you can don't be don't worry what we will think we will thank you because if you were not frank enough then we wouldn't be able to improve that uh sir again uh, me i would like to say something uh, sir as we know uh, bec- uh, that uh, uh, in physics we are told that everything is an inertia there is an inertia of rest there is an inertia of uh, speed so uh, what happens that uh, suddenly when we are exposed to uh, such high applications of the field sometimes like for example hplc or the microfluidic uh, we read that how uh, paper based pcr can be done so what happens that if i'm not done microfluidic i'll have so much inertia oh my god this is such an incredible field so i'll think maybe i cannot do this uh, now if uh, after that uh, talk from the great person we have some incubation small sessions like the uh, like we had in microfluidics like the basics of it so then i later realized ki oh, microfluidics is something within my reach so regarding all the things we are taught so not only the great aspects but how the easier aspects the basic aspects so most of us are undergraduates and that too from very different fields so that inertia gets broken so that we think no this field also you know i can do it so 
uh, facilitation like that. So you are saying that after complicated subjects, if there is a possibility of a hands-on experiment, then that yes. will facilitate internalization of the concept. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, yes. We can paper strip uh, separation, paper-based separation can be done at home with a. You can set up an ex a very simple tool for uh, uh, that paper chromatography. So it is not that difficult. Actually, we can yes. take up some such experiments where you can design your own instruments. And paper chromography is one which can be done. So I think it's a good thought. We will think about it. How you can do certain instrumentation also at home. Some of you have done that actually, but more of that. It's a good thought. Anybody uh, else? Sir, uh, sir yeah. one suggestion from my side is uh, like after lecture and workshop, like from whole day, so we should create a kind of groups. Like uh, if uh, in one week we take a microbiology and bioinformatics. So after uh, getting to know, uh, getting know about, uh, getting information about all those subjects, people have interest about some particular subject. Like I have, uh, like I, uh, I said I have uh, uh, interest in aromatics and herbal plants. So can we arrange one uh, special lecture for those group of people, like uh, some other people like me who has an interest in herbal and aromatic plants? So can we arrange uh, after like what, after what four lecture? Time? I think it's a good yeah. thought. What we could do, perhaps, either during the BIS or afterwards, we can have every month maybe one or two uh, general lectures for BIS alumnus and others, of course. Others can also join. Uh, yes. let, me think, let us think about it. This is not a bad idea that once we start making groups of students in different fields, we arrange a continuing engagement with those students and we should not forget them. For example, the first BIS we haven't done much with them afterwards. So I think it's a good thought worth reflecting on for all of us as to how do we keep the students engaged after making their more specific, more focused group, and then they can at attend. Of course, you can attend any lecture, but certainly certain lectures for that group. Uh, yes, yeah, let us think about it. That's a good thought. Actually. It's a good thought. Yes. So this will also create more solidarity across this, and students will... Yeah, we, we did not get too many interdisciplinary projects. I mean, where students have worked together. That did not happen much this time, but maybe in future we will have to find ways of that. And even now, if some of you want to work together, please go ahead and form your own group and we will facilitate that. I mean, yes, learning sir, never sir. ends. This ends, but learning doesn't end. So if some of you wish to co join hands together, we will facilitate yeah. that. We will facilitate that. So if there are no other comments, anybody else wants to say before we wrap up? Ega? Yes, sir. Uh, huh, so the next is... Uh, yes, sir. So you want to conclude, sir, or we... Will... I will just conclude by a few words which... Uh, and Manish, do you want to say anything at the end? Before sir, I conclude... No, no, just uh, uh, I'm also equally inspired and uh, charged uh, by listening to the feedback as well as to Dr. Sanjay's uh, no, uh, lecture. Uh, what I, uh, from the feedback, what I could sense was if we can create a repository of the lectures uh, in an online format, which becomes accessible as a, as a database or as a repository that can be used you know, anytime accessed like a podcast. Uh, that would be helpful because the kind of effort you are you have done to bring pe you know, people as uh, mentors on board for the place workshop it's one of the unique way and uh, similar kind of uh, like uh, descriptions the mentor or experts when they try to connect with the ug level students so that's a different frequency they they try and uh, you know, uh, bring in this course of their lectures. So this becomes a special uh, special uh, deliberation by them. And this may not be replicated in their routine uh, no lectures or conference or, or uh, other exposures. So uh, I feel that this could be a valuable resource and uh, you already have that access. So might as well make it a structured one. Yeah, so we will create a Moodle platform 
we will shortly create a Moodle platform where all of these lectures can be hosted and uh, such a easily searchable assignments, everything we will put it up there. Everything will be in open source so that anybody wants to access that, they have to register for it so that we keep track of the students who are using it, but there is no fees for that. And uh, certainly we will do that. Certainly we will do that. That is one concrete follow-up. I will get it done. I will personally yes make sure that it is done in the next one month. We will get a uh, Moodle created. Moodle is a platform where we have assignments, lectures, submissions, everything at one place. So for each session, for a lecture, for a course that we conduct for uh, UNDP and we are now doing for ACSIR, we are creating that kind of a platform. So we will be easily able to do that. So friends, uh, before we conclude, let me thank uh, Bayrek, let me thank Dr. Sanjay Kumar, uh, let me thank all the partners who have helped us, CSIR, provides uh, the CSIR Bhatnagar Fellowship, provides me a lot of freedom to do many things that I am able to pursue. And uh, I must thank CSIR for all the support that they provide. Uh, I must also thank, of course, uh, Department of Biotechnology. Dr. Renu was uh, our speaker last time and uh, has uh, been personally very closely tra keeping track of what we do. As Dr. Manish mentioned, Shilpi couldn't join us, I think, today. Shilpi, are you there? Perhaps not, because she must have been using something it else. It was not so well, yeah. so. No, I, okay. Okay. Yes, okay. So, Shilpi, I would like to thank her also, because she has been constantly in touch with our team and myself to make sure that everything happens uh, to the last detail and perfectly. Uh, we were quite ambitious in terms of bringing experts, and I can realize that some of the lectures were far too complex for your level. But, you know, unless there's a gap between what we know and what we know, ought to know, the desire to learn doesn't give me much. So this gap was deliberate. The gap between what you know and what you ought to know was deliberately created to keep a little bit dissatisfaction in your heart. And as one of you very rightly mentioned that now I realize that I should be interested in this, that and so on. It is only because of exposure that your mind is getting open and you are looking for those avenues. So we are very happy about that. I want to thank students who have gone to an extraordinary extent in doing home experiments. Many of you could not present today because of the paucity of time, but a large number of you have done wonderful work in your home experiments. We are very proud of you. And we assure you that apart from the 10 who, which will be selected on the basis of protocol that you develop and the experiment that you have done uh, for one lakh award, we will support anybody else who wants to incubate their, their technology, their solution as an enterprise. Our incubator at 30 is open and you're all welcome to join the incubator, those of you who want to set up enterprise. You can set up an enterprise as a student as well. So don't worry about that. And then maybe some of you will apply for big grant. Uh, I, it would be lovely if some of you aspire enough to get the 50 lakh grant and not just one lakh grant. So please uh, keep your aspiration level high. Dr. Sanjay has said, not just any award, but a Nobel Prize. And that is a wonderful aspiration. I cannot make it better than that. So please, God bless you all. Remain safe. Follow all the COVID precautions. Do get vaccination done. Uh, now that on 21st June, we are opening it up. Country is opening it up for 18 plus. So please do get vaccinated and persuade everybody around you the service providers at your home, the driver, the servants, everybody at your around you, please persuade them to get vaccination. This is a national mission. This is, if, if nobody, if one person is not safe, we are not safe. We have to make everybody safe. So there's a special appeal because country at this moment needs cooperation of every individual and your cooperation in making sure that everybody else gets vaccinated apart from yourself is very much warranted. And I request you all, to make extra effort to persuade your relatives, your friends, your neighbors, your community members, and service providers to you for getting vaccinated. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. 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 Namaskar, Doctor Devan, sir. Likewise, sir. Nice, nice to interact, and thank you so much for participating. Vega, are we closing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mani, sir, and Sanjay, sir, for uh, your presence in this event and making this event successful. 
and uh, I thank Shaila, I thank Richa, I thank all my colleagues, Chetan, uh, yes. Ramesh, everybody, every colleague in Sati, uh, Venu, and all others who have helped in small, small details every time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.